quorum, let's call the meeting to order at uh, 641. Uh, are there any adjustments to the agenda? I would just like to talk about um, my meeting with Mary Ellen at the SU. Okay. And um, bring up um, a proposal from Dr. Waller, uh, Dr. Walter Gallup about something with Haiti, something with something with Haiti. Okay, so that's two things. So right. it would be under discussion items? Mm -hmm. seven right, the first one's the discussion, I think they're both discussion three. items. Seven three and seven four. There's one that says update on literacy work on 72. So is that? Oh, okay. I don't know. Does that fall under your with Mary Ellen? Yeah. Okay. And okay. so then uh, 573 would be um, 80. 80.
effort that passed. So we're uh, four for four so far, which I'm happy about. But uh, they were long meetings, all of them. Um, a couple of them were fairly contentious, but in the end, um, they were adopted. So we are taking 30 people to Boston uh, next Monday and Tuesday uh, for the literacy uh, trainings at Leslie University. And uh, we'll be going uh, about 30, I think there's 28 actually, uh, from all the schools in the SU. And uh, we're a little concerned about so many being out that we need subs and they're not having subs. So uh, I think we're covered right now, but uh, there certainly can't be any more added. Uh, we're renting three vans and um, staying down there for two days. There are a couple teachers that are coming down the morning of Monday, uh, but where most of us are going on Sunday night and staying over for two days. And I'm driving one of the vans and two of the other, uh, there's a teacher driving another one and uh, another principal driving the third one. And we, uh, um, we should be understand uh, a lot more about uh, the an introduction to some of the materials that we've bought uh, now that they're starting to arrive in the schools uh, they are I think they've shown up here and each one of the schools there's an awful lot of materials and uh, uh, so we're on our way with that uh, we also are talking to the Amy Toth about some training excited about working with her. I just have an email from her. I haven't read it yet, but uh, so that's happening. Uh, so is FMP providing the training for us to go? Mm -hmm. And the... Uh, so why aren't they coming here? Because the presentations, um, Mary, Mary Ellen told me all this. Uh, <clears throat> they. Uh, one of the things is the person that's presenting is uh, Mrs. Fontes. Who's, Are they paying for us to go there? No, they're, we're wow. we're we're, uh, we're going to do this. It's all grant money. And, but still, uh, we spent two hundred thousand dollars. Usually, companies give something for that. And if they're not willing to come here to our district, at least. Well, I don't think it's not that, that they're not willing. We want to. Now that the materials have arrived, we want to get on this and and have people trained so that they can reach out and, and do the training uh, in the classrooms when now that a lot of the materials have arrived. Oh, I agree with you, but then shouldn't, for that amount of money, shouldn't they be coming here and looking at the classrooms and we, helping? We asked them about that. I don't think they can provide that training until the summer or beyond, and uh, because if they're And if Mary Ellen were here, she'd tell you all the reasons why we did it this way. I'm not able to provide all that, but I know that part of it is because of the presentation um, is going to be given by the authors, and anything else like that is not going to happen. But I think that should be in addition to, not in place of. They should be. We spent a lot of money. Well, they can. And that's usually negotiating with that. What would you give us? If we spend two hundred thousand dollars, will you give us this free? Will you give us that? What are they giving us for that amount of money? If they're not coming to the schools and helping us do this, is a big implementation, mm -hmm. and they should be on site, and that should have been part of the package. Well, part of what Mary Ellen did a lot of negotiating with them. I believe we got the materials a lot cheaper than they would have been otherwise. So, but if so you want to know specifically, I can't. Can't frame that. So She's you don't know what professional development they are providing for free in this implementation. No, I don't. What's the additional cost of this trip? Um, Since it's over be uh, over and above the 200k. Well, we're going to be we're going to be staying uh, down there for two nights, mm -hmm. um, and we're also going to rent uh, the vans. The vans. And probably eat food. 
well, what we budgeted for the um i know the vans are going to cost us a thousand bucks um for the three days that we're going to be using them we're going to pick them up saturday and then um and uh we will be uh, provided lunches uh we will be provided breakfast and um We'll have to probably do uh, dinner on our own while we're down there. Okay. So then it's just transportation and lodging, and what's the so the transportation you said is a grand. The lodging is um, about 150 a night, which is pretty good for Boston rates. We're not going to stay stay, yeah. stay at a real high end. Place. As per person. Yeah. But, uh, th there will be people doubling up. Six or eight, eight, eight grand. Eight. No, uh, if it's two nights, that was only one for night. They're not charging for us for the for to come. They're not. There's no charge for us. There's a charge for us. I don't know what the uh, the rate of the workshop is. There's going to be probably 200 people in the workshop. So, so we we're paying yeah. to go. Yes, we are. Are they providing other? Um, Training, yeah, are they providing other training besides this to us? Um, we'll have that'll have to be later on. This is the only thing we're doing with them right now. So that's at least the place that that founded all of this, and uh, so we're going to be going uh, and listening to the person who wrote the program. Right. This found us. So do we know? We know what's the per person cost to attend the seminar? Do we know? I don't, I don't know. And the professional development provided by them was it's not a, it's part a course. of the package. It's a course. But I mean, but it's but it's not up front. No. No. Okay. No. <coughs> this is like an additional seminar that. Well, the teachers all have professional development money, and we also have grant money, so. It's not going to cost the districts extra money do the to do this. Do the teachers decide what professional, what money they want to put on professional Yeah, about. right. They get up to probably um, three thousand bucks a year. Oh, and I am so our teachers, our teachers are choosing to use their pro professional development stipend not for UVM graduate course credits, but to do this. Well, this so is, this is, these are course credits. Yeah, they're right. at Leslie University. Right, but if I remember the contract correctly, any any development we require the teachers to pay doesn't come out of their stipend. If we say you're going to get this and we're going to send you here and you get four credits for it, if we make them go there, we have to pay for it. Uh -huh. If they choose to go for if they if they choose to go for whatever their own development is, we pay them a certain amount of money. What I'm trying to understand is this development fee, the the, the, the seminar costs, are the teachers that are going there choosing to do that so we don't have to pay additional money towards that so that this is not going to be over and be uh, right. over and above no. the, 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 the professional right. development money that's allocated in this half budget they all chose those 28 people chose to go to this training and, okay and, and we're, we're, we've been clear with them that this is their voluntary contribution that therefore they're not going to be able to this is how they're this summer right. and get. I don't want I want to be clear I think some of this is coming out of the Medicaid funds that we have right. I think so the way it's it was, not I think the way it's not were, all though you had right the way it was opted okay. I think is if you hadn't if you had already used up all your professional development so do we have a list then of who's going, whether it's their own personal development money or whether we're paying extra for it, the cost of the seminar, the cost of the rooms, who's rooming, well, I mean, how many rooms total, I don't care that, who's rooming that exactly extra with who. Extra from the grant. So are you talking about extra from our budget or extra from... Well, I, I just want to know what the cost of, of, of this is. I mean, whether it's coming from a grant, I mean, if it's grant-eligible funds, we could spend them on other things, right? I mean, it's a grant, you know, if it's Medicaid money, if it's grant money, we have choice, I mean, we can't supplant, you know, all the various Medicaid rules, but we're choosing to use SU grant money to do this. I'm curious, you know, how much money that is. Since we're going away in like a week, I kind of thought we'd have
have clearer numbers as to what that might be, you know, in terms of, I would think that someone in the business office knows we booked X numbers of rooms at this much a night and that equals this, that, you know, attendance is this much a night and that equals that. You know, apparently the vans are a thousand bucks and then there's whatever the gas might be and tolls and things and parking at the hotels because often Boston hotels cost, you know, charge parking. But it, you know, seeing seeing that as a list as opposed to, yeah, we're spending some money and we don't know what it is yet, is two different sorts of things. I guess I, I guess I don't understand why you're questioning. Why, I'm curious, why, why are I'm, why are you getting into where the professional development is going with teachers in the district? I don't recall you ever questioning any other workshops that they're going to. Any other well, because it's to? it's it's sure. Um, the the that the, it, it's one thing when it's you know a, a, a couple thousand dollars cost. It's another thing when it's a two hundred thousand dollar cost. I mean, the meeting in December where this was first introduced to us with the the woman who's the the, the principal that was coming in to do the analysis. Amy was, saw. Right. Amy, so so Amy was going to come in and 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 do this kind of analysis for us, and then. We very quickly went to, you know, spending two hundred thousand dollars. Which, okay, um, I don't know anything about what this is. I'm not a professional educator. You are. That's what we hire you to do. Um, but understanding, okay, so this money's coming, and now we're spending somewhere that seems to be in the neighborhood of at least <coughs> ten grand by the time it's all done. And so, just understanding you know, what that cost is and, and, and where it's coming from is, is, is you know, kind of our, our, our job is to, 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 to well, you, look you at spending. You allow teachers to have about $3,000 each year. Sure, to exactly. To spend on professional development. Correct. They are, they are excited about this. That's, they that's, want to that's do good. it. good. And we have materials now that they are going to start to use, and we want them to be able to use them with fidelity, cor the correct way. Sure. That's the sure. And some this. of the teachers apparently are using their personal allocations to do this. Some of them aren't. Right. You know, being you know, I don't think it's 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 you know overreach to say, tell us what you're spending the money on. You know, say here's like the, the money and where's it being spent. I think this was my question to begin with, so I initiated this, and I'm sorry if I caused all this trouble, but I'm not questioning the professional development that teachers are getting. What I'm questioning is, we spent $200,000, and we're paying for the workshop and all of this, and they should be coming to us. And the fact that the professional development, which, from what Mary Ellen said to me, we're not buying a program, we're buying a process. Now I'm saying, they should, if this is a process, where are they in this process? We have to pay to go to Boston. I'm not saying that the professional development's good or bad. I'm just saying they should be coming to us. If you knew anything about Mary Ellen, you would know that she works people, that vendors that we buy from. And I believe she sucked everything she possibly could out of uh, the Fonda Bruce, if thing. professional development is the basis of this process because you didn't buy a program, then why wasn't professional development part and parcel of it to begin with? I've never seen an implementation. We are using Amy Toth to provide our professional development. We have a, we're developing we're a contract. We're paying extra. We're developing a contract. But what is F&P giving, giving, giving us? We spent two hundred thousand. We are going. We are. We want this. We want to go to this. We want to learn this. That's fine. But that's, what it has nothing to us? do with what we bought. I mean, that's, that's those incredible. are the materials. No, it's not. Yes, you, it is. You don't know the details. I, you don't I know the details. I have never seen an implementation of a new program where the company that got that amount of money didn't provide on-site professional development to go through that. And you can't even tell me we have what it is. Some of the slots were free because we're sending people. We're sending so many people. Some of the slots are free. But as far as the detail about how much it's costing and all that, I wasn't prepared to, to show you that tonight because I didn't think it would be questioned. You the never questioned anything else. Because the because they should be given because us Because the, the, the magnitude of the cost. I mean, we're supposed to, at what dollar level are we supposed to get three bids? 
You know, I mean, we're we're we're, we're certainly this is this isn't a trivial amount of money. This is this is a, a decent amount of money that you can't. I mean, it's not even a question of we're saying we're for it or we're against it. You can't give us an accounting of what it is. There is one vendor who provides these materials. One. There aren't several people who do this. This is a company. This is Heinemann. That's a, that's w what they do. We've gone through this. Been working on this since the beginning of the uh, the fall about what we wanted to buy and the materials we were going to find. Okay, but I I mean I'll talk about that at another point about my meeting with Mary Ellen. But I have never, and I've been involved with a whole lot. I have never seen an implementation that the professional development is not part and parcel of that implementation. I, this may be the best professional development in the world. And I am, give the teachers more than $3,000 if we can. But what, I'm, we're, I can't believe we spent $200,000. We may be getting materials, that always happens. What are the consultants doing? Who's coming during this process? Because it was emphasized to me this is not a program, it's a process. Well, if it's a process, then where are these people within this process? Are we going to have on-site um, professional development we, we, training? We can't get that. We can, yeah, it is, we it's can not get that. I don't know what Mary Ellen has arranged. Yeah. I wasn't in on the meeting mm -hmm. with that. Uh, I, I don't micromanage her. Mm -hmm. I allow her to, to work with the principals and the other people in the literacy committee to, to, to develop this. So, I mean, I, I'm, you know, that's what they're doing. And like I say, our teachers are excited about this. They really are. And uh, That has nothing to do with what I said. I'm glad they're excited. I'm glad everyone's going together. I think that's a wonderful way to form collaboration and everyone will be in Boston together and eating and all of that. I think that's great. And mixing with other people, I think that's even, and teachers, I think that's even better. I just think they would need more than just a two-day seminar, though. Oh, sure. do. Well, and, and they need on-site coaching. Otherwise, not they're not so, but what? But wasn't that? Why wasn't that in the process? So you're the one that met with with Mary Ellen. And, and, and so, and my Mary understanding, because we have two teachers going, but they asked the question about after the fact, is they're going to be deemed as teacher leaders because they will have this additional training to on site. And there was, well, Mary Ellen is looking into the on site training and the specifics about that, which I don't know. But when this first came out as an opportunity, it was one of those like people were excited, like you said, and that's great that people are excited. And then the concept that um, they would be teacher leaders and help mm -hmm. other teachers in addition with more training because yeah, two days. Right. You're going to get a great not. introduction to it and get excited about so it. So only two of our teachers are going. Two of it, it's start primary. of just kind of vaguely saying that it's a it's it's a you know if it's a seminar for 30 people at two hundred dollars two hundred fifty dollars a head that's seven thousand dollars in seminar fees some of them may be comped we're not sure that's four thousand some dollars in hotel rooms some people may be doubling up we're not sure there may be a dinner we think people are on there we don't know about that there's a thousand dollars in fees that's a twelve thousand dollar expense that i haven't seen blessed by the the su board I haven't seen, you know, brought forward as a discussion item, and procedurally, that just seems wrong. This is not a small. Let's send a couple people to 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 a seminar, or you know, let's 
buy some additional materials. This is this is a fairly large expense that it seems like we can't even provide any detail as to what it is, other than vaguely we're sending some people to a seminar. They're going to go to a ho they're they're going to go and, and and stay in a hotel. We're driving some vans, and one of the people that's named in the in in in, in the training is going to be there, and that's the advantage we want to take ourselves of. I really don't feel like this was brought. I mean, or or handled appropriately in terms of board oversight, whether it's SU board or or or, or local board, and really it's, it's I, I think it's more of an a, SU question, but this doesn't seem like, you know, it, it, it was it was taken through appropriate channels. And maybe it's because of the timing of it, I don't know, but it doesn't seem appropriate at all. It was absolutely taken through appropriate channels. Okay. Unfortunately, I've been talking about it for the last three executive board meetings and you haven't been in attendance. So okay. I'm sorry, but I'll I look at the minutes talking so, about it. Sure. Is it I, I, I did not see anything meeting I've been talking about. Sure, I did not see anything that approved that level of expense in the uh, in the no, uh, executive board this. minutes. Did, did any of us did you know about this professional I was talking about on the SU board? Right. No, Amy, I don't Amy gave a presentation to the SU board, and we talked at that time about what we were going to be doing. And there was an action item that approved the money. I never saw no minutes for that. I have been talking about the money. Okay. I, don't, I didn't ask them to vote on it. Why not? But, it's a five-figure expense. Well, they could have voted on it if they wanted to vote on it, but it's also not in in the SU budget or in the the. Uh, various town budgets so it's I have been very deliberate about this is what we're going to do with this money we're working on literacy it's in the strategic plan sure the strategic plans now three years old mm -hmm. it's on the website for everybody to see yep that so, is that you is know and, and every board approved that strategic plan that has sure. to do with uh, sure. what we were trying to do so now for you to say that that well, it's a surprise is it's not right, I don't think. Okay, well, that, that you, you are certainly allowed to feel that way. I'm, I mean, my point is based on these are the this level of expense is things that are approved at a board level. And while yes, you are correct, I have not been at, at the uh, last couple executive board meetings. Neither have I seen in the minutes the fact that this money was allocated or spent for it. So that's where the problem is. But it wasn't like it's. It was if they had PD funds, which goes through myself and Bonnie, they apply for the PD funds, it's okay to the central office if they still have the money left. Like that's the process. So while yes, it's a grand expense altogether, it's important to understand that it's a bunch of different entities going together. Sure. So like I approved my teachers to go, Bonnie approved her teachers to go. And sure. So like they had PD money. In my situation, mine had PD money. So like Sure, and I, your point I would feel a lot better if there was a spreadsheet that said we're spending this on this and this on this and that on this, and it seemed more deliberate and not just kind of a conversational. I can't tell you how many hotel rooms I'm getting. I can't tell you what we're spending on on uh, on fees. You're the you're you know you're the group that's charged with financial oversight, and we're not getting the appropriate information. I'm not saying we should hold this up or that we should we should try to, to, to impeach it. I'm just saying that I, I want it, it to be very clear that this is not the appropriate way to for, for this level of funds to be expended. I, I think it may be, um, I would I would choose a different word, Carl, other than appropriate. I think there may be a lack of understanding on what the expectations are of the board when we take on these types of professional developments. I'll give you another example. Lindy and I are planning on taking uh, teams from our schools to the best institute this summer we're hoping to mm -hmm. that's going to be a fairly sizable expense for which people all have professional development monies it would have never entered my mind to bring you a detailed this is know. how many people are going this is who's staying this is who's not staying if that's the level of information that the board wants I think we and I'm still relatively new but if that's the level of information that the board wants then we need to know that's what you expect so that we do bring in, and I know your question, Jenny, was a, was yeah, a different question, uh, yeah, Jenny. Uh, I know that. Totally no, different. no, I know it's not related to your question. Um, but I do think if if that level of oversight is what you feel you want every time we support group professional developments, then we just need to know that. 
I think the other thing that he said that it's important, it is a big number problem we're sending 25 or 30 people to Boston, but it, it is all separate entities. So from my end, it may be an $1,100 expense. From Lindy's end, it may be a $2,800 expense. It's, sure. it's having an understanding, at least I'm feeling now, that I need to have an understanding from the board of what are your expectations around these types of professional development activities because I would have never thought to bring that level of detail when I mentioned that and we Bonnie, were going I to never, best. That was not, my intent is only why is an F&B providing this? Right, right, that's right. my intent. And I'm that. just trying to sort the two yeah. questions. No, I, don't, I think that we, we certainly trust you guys as the instructional leaders to decide what professional development our teachers need. And, and I, I don't think we should ever get down to the detail of the And my guess is if Mary Ellen Simmons were sitting here, she could answer every one of these questions. Sure. Bruce, and she's has, not Bruce has a different he has a different vision from a different level up. Um, and I can understand if the board wants this information that we should provide it. But I also think we have to be clear about we want it at the board meeting when something's going to be discussed so we can be prepared. Sure. Well, I, and, and I think that again, the issue that I'm not, I'm not, I don't care whether you're staying at the Quality Inn or the Homewood Suites, or, or you know, and show me that you got the best deal you could get on Priceline. What I hear and see is something that is not supported by any sort of documentation or any sort of any sort of backup. Had there been. For example, a list that said, and we're going away on these days, and here's the approximate cost of this, and here's where these things are but coming Paul, from. Are you saying you want that every you, you single want time? That, that I want that. I want that in terms of in terms of in in, in terms of uh, a five-figure projects, in terms of in terms so of, of, of like big expense. You take three to four teachers. Why? Right. That's how much professional development's got. Like yeah. No, I understand. I understand. I understand that. But I, I think that's micromanaging. I, do. I think they need to decide what professional development. Sure, the and the question need, is the, the, I don't no, want no, to get down to questioning. No, 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 no. I'm not, I'm not asking. I'm not asking for the information to 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 to, to question it per se. What I'm ask, asking for is the information so that. Again, we can't. We we we've been told that some teachers are using their own professional development money to do this, and some aren't. So there's going to potentially be budgetary exposure beyond what's already in our budget, right? No, no, no that would be no, grant money. No, 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 that would be grant money. Those who have right, to but grant, but I mean, grant money is still a revenue. It's 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 still a revenue source. The grant money that, we, that we're using right, for this, we could be using for for but for, I for something else. It would be like an exposure, I guess. But. Well, it's again, it's 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 but money that we can't use for another place. Is not, that you're asking for them to for the principals to give that amount of detail every single time because that's what when it's when it's do. no, I, I I think when it's a when it's in in, in my opinion when it's a large what amount would of that money, be? A, a five figure expense. So that's ten thousand dollars. Yeah. I mean, I mean we're that spending. Could be, that could be three teachers taking a course, Carl. See, that's the thing. Could, sure, could, but I mean, would, no, not but, sure. You know, I think I, I, again, I think the difference here is that a teacher that's taking a course that's that, that's but that, that's covered by the money that we've already put into the budget because they're allowed to take X amount, you know, six graduate hours or whatever, sure. whatever the contract currently covers. We've budgeted for that. That's fine. It's when there's a, when when there's something that's above and beyond. Because a teacher doesn't have to spend their own money to, to, to participate in things that we mandate, right. um, whether it's well, we would whether never it's do that. We would never go beyond what they have in professional development unless we had grant funds that were coming from some other source that weren't impacting your budgets to use in spite of it. And that's what's happening here. I've never been asked to justify those kinds of things. And if it's if that's what you want going forward, I'll be happy to do it. But this is a pure surprise to me okay. that I board th members th are getting involved in this. I think the other thing that's important to clarify is that, again, I'm going to say that if Mary Ellen Simmons were sitting here, I think every one of these questions would have been answered. Correct? Not, not your initial question, Jenny, of Joni, of what? Yeah, Janie. Jenny, <laughs> why? <laughs> Jenny, oh, Joni, so Janie, and Jim. Jim. To that. It's starting to, I don't know what. <laughs> don't even say um, that on tape. Uh, uh, I know, I'm talking to me. I'm, I'm putting my earphones on. <laughs> 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 I'm 
my phone and you're screaming about 70? Listen to you. Um, I think if Mary Ellen were sitting here, all of your questions would, would be answered fairly quickly. So I just want to make it clear that it's not that this is, and I didn't hear anybody say this, but I want to clarify this. This hasn't been done haphazardly. It's not something that no one can account for. It's just her responsibilities are curriculum, curriculum development, professional development, et cetera. She can, I've never called and asked her a question about that aspect of this district that she can't answer or get back to me, Mighty Sulu, with an answer. I think Bruce does not have all that level of detail. Just like he doesn't have, I don't have all the level of detail of the next unit that my PE teacher is, is getting ready to deliver. He oh, I bet you do. I, I honestly probably don't. He could sit here. Oh, fess up. You I do. just think, I just think that we, there is a need on the board tonight, for, the, for whatever particular reason, to have a level of detail that, to be frank, I'm only going to speak for me here, I wasn't anticipating you would ever ask me for. And so that's just my, my two cents worth on why we can't answer the questions tonight. And again, I want to clarify, I was not asking the hotel, but I was, the whole the thing cost. concerned I me. The it's dollar amount was me. I hear you. I, I hear think you. the only time that I would want that level of detail is if it was going to be above and beyond what we've already right. and budgeted it. for and, and we would get it. it. And then, so that we are aware of Changes. Change it. Yeah. Yeah. I, I also think, to be frank, we should, none of us, Lindy, Bruce, I, none of us should be spending a lot of money without having as part of the discussion, oh, by the way, this is what we're doing. We're taking a team here. That should be a, 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 in our monthly reports so that it isn't a complete surprise when you hear we spent $6,000 to go to the best institute um, because the board needs to have a sense of what are we doing in those areas. Right. So, anything else? All right. <laughs> Want to try again? <laughs> Probably not. Come on. Um, no, uh, just uh, that I've been trying to get your audits out of our auditor, and uh, I had a conversation with him uh, last Friday, and the Friday before that, uh, we were told that they would be coming Maryland, help me with this. Because yeah. I know you've, you've been, been trying phone. every week, multiple times. You've been times. on the phone with them, and it's them. just, and uh, it was a hard audit. Uh, I don't think it necessarily reflects on yours, but well, the, the totality it? of them, there were 16 audits that had to take place. So and it's the district wide, correct. he's not providing audit. Not SUI, not your, your audit. I say your audit, I mean the big your. Okay. So everybody's in all the districts. The, district. the only one I have is Hancock's, actually. So <laughs> probably pretty and that's, <laughs> that's probably pretty easy one to do. Passed if they didn't have a budget, I don't understand. Well, we have the figures. They didn't uh, have an audit. They, they, didn't, have they the didn't, audit. didn't have the audit, but we had oh. the figures of where we stood last year. They may, Marilyn, help me with this. It might change a little bit, but not <laughs> yeah, oh, so it's because of the audit. Yeah, right. Okay. Right. I mean, the audit should have been here by by now. I was in the room with you. We call them at least once a week, sometimes twice a week, and each time the auditor would promise that we'd have them by the end of the week, and each time they did not materialize except for Granville and Hancock. <laughs> and that was a pretty simple one. No. So in order to do the audit, the, the information comes from the central office. So uh, we have a fairly good idea where we're at, but until you get the final audit so that you can really make the journal adjustments that you need to to match the audit, you can't really give the definitive actuals that we ended up with. All right. But for all the other towns, certainly we knew what the budget was for this current year and we developed a budget for next year. What was, we couldn't give them definitively was here's exactly how much you spent in that now, is the um, choice of who we use for auditors a uh, SU board choice, or is that a local board choice? Um, I believe it was uh, a, uh, yeah, they, they have to be handled at the SU, so it was an executive board decision. It's an executive board decision. That I'm happened. We got a lot of the, uh, these guys, the previous auditor that we had, 
these the per people that we had did the uh, Windsor Northwest side, and we had Ag Aguilano who did uh, the Orange Windsor side. Aguilano decided they were getting out of the business, and so these guys picked up both sides, uh, and they're from Maine, and we've we've had a good you know good run with them. Uh, it, it's not it, it's just been problematic, and it, it's just I'm sure that it, the level of the amount of these um, has been, you know, the, the amount that they've had to audit has been difficult. For them. Yeah, they're all so, in a transition. You know, like I say, there were 16 of them. That's pretty, the old ones plus the new merger, you know, mm -hmm. thing. So it's just. I could so. also tell you that many districts were left in a bind because David Angelano decided not to do, you know, there's probably at least 20 districts throughout right. the state that he did. So when you went out to bid, have anyone responding. There's, there's very few individuals that do government audits to the magnitude of school districts anyway. And then because there were so many that had opened up, uh, it was very difficult to find auditors to even bid on things. There's, there's only a handful, literally a handful, of auditors throughout the state that will do so it's a job market. <laughs> it is a job market. <laughs> yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and, and it, I'd be a good auditor, so. Maybe <laughs> <laughs> we need to go into business you together. You need to go into business together. <laughs> okay. I'm good. Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> it's Carl's job. I know. Principal's report. Well, the principals are here to report that there are a couple of slackers. There is no principals. <laughs> we um, we apologize for that. We've been wrapped up in doing budgets and um, took a few days off last week. And to be frank, I told Lindy I would do the principals report, and it completely slipped my mind. So you have no principals report. A um, couple of things going on. Uh, kids returned today. We did a makeup day today to make up for one of the snow days. Um, they were excited to be back. Things went really well the first day back. Parents were glad to have them back. That's how we do it. We had to have a regroup in sixth grade at 20. <laughs> yeah, that's yeah. pretty early in the day. Um, tomorrow night, there, yes, tomorrow night, there's mm -hmm. going to be um, a sort of an open house here for sixth graders for school choice. A number of the uh, middle schools from the surrounding areas are going to be here talking about their programs and give parents a chance to come and visit different schools to see where they might uh, lead in terms of choice for their youngsters for 7th and 8th grade. Do we know if Middlebury ever responded? So Middlebury did they respond. Did, they did something response. different last year where they set up individual tours and shadow days and they felt like that was more successful because of the number of kids that ended up going there so they were not going, they're not going to come. So, so basically, the are coming? Yeah. 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 Right. And sharing. And then Thursday is our last Winter Wellness Day for this year. Kids will enjoy their last day of skiing and snowboarding, etc. cetera. Um, and then February, both groups got together uh, for I Love to Read Month after Winter Wellness. Amy Brown read her book that she authored to the younger, to the primary grades. And then in the upper grades, Sandy Lincoln from Sandy's Books came, gave every kid a $5 gift certificate. Oh, nice. Slightly jealous of and um, she read part of Hatchet, right? Was read Hatchet, part yeah. of Hatchet and talked about adventure. And then each building kind of had a, a wide variety of guest <laughs> readers come in and different activities. And we had two local uh, authors who came and read their book about Muslimo, Blueberry Hill. And oh, nice. we're planning, and we'd like to invite the board to join us. We're planning to um, do a field trip for, for both of our campuses to Muslimo and take a big picnic lunch. So we'll spend the day up there, have a picnic, and the authors have offered to go along with us and actually take us well, through the treasure hunt. Well, you can as soon as we set our date. I, I want to go. Feel free to go. But they were just to go. Oh boy. <laughs> they, were, uh, they were very excited to, to yeah, accompany to us and set up a little scavenger hunt up there that oh, coincides with right. the book. Right. Oh, yes. So, uh, yeah. They talked about how they authored a book. Yeah, they yeah. did a really nice job talking yes. about it. How you oh, author a book, neat. how a book's illustrated. How it got started. How it got started. Their own. Yeah, it was really great. So 
Um, it was a tremendous success. The, it, I think there was enough, um, I think there were enough planned events and then enough downtime events where classroom teachers and youngsters could just come up with their own ideas about how they wanted to celebrate I Love to Read Week. So, and then it ended with a uh, culminating ceremony in the, uh, I read about that. In the, in the auditorium over at the high school at Rochester, and we gave out uh, reading certificates, and kids acknowledged the numbers of minutes that they read. And we went to go see goats at this <laughs> farm, <laughs> and had a cookout over the fire, and it was a good idea to be outside the Friday before <laughs> vacation. Um, and where did you do that? The Blues Farm, oh, Rebecca that's so and neat. Joe yeah. invited us up, and oh, I neat. had just had a bunch of baby goats. So oh, I bet a, that was the goats for a hit. The goats for a hit. Your I daughter was like, yeah. I hold this one. Yeah. I hold this one. It's like, and I held four goats today. Yes. <laughs> um, so that was kind of our celebration. And our fifth and sixth grade group had a goal of 10,000 minutes. And that's actually them trying to, for the whole month. And they think they kind of made it, but they're not sure because there's some holes. <laughs> But it's intrigued them enough to do it for another month to see if they can get 15,000 minutes to go. And well, this is which one? That's fifth and sixth grade. Okay. And Jack then, Henry. um... Nothing. Jack Henry's nothing. <laughs> <laughs> Jack Henry was not school today. Oh, I know. Not, not today either. <coughs> so, um, so that's why. There were some absences. But he, not very many, but... Uh, now, as I love to read, we, um, like, PTO involved in that? Is that they? They do. They provide a lot of they support. They provide a lot of support. Yeah. Okay, great. They so brought in donuts and cider the last day. They the PTO for their involvement. Books and bagels. And books and bagels. I don't know about you guys, but I had a ball. Yeah, it was really it was great. Really Jody's a pit and a half, boy. She is. Yes. She is. So, she is oh my head. goodness. She is so funny. Yes, she she is. left for vacation a couple days early and stood in the doorway and didn't want to leave because she was going to miss the last okay. two. Oh. <laughs> your mom's like that. She's I'm the one kidding. that has a little, has a thing for each and so. Oh, do I see them? Oh, she likes smile. Oh, they're pals. <laughs> they find each other. Oh. Whatever they get together. <laughs> okay. All right. Moving right on. Turn it off. I like it. I like it. Go over tonight. Moving right so. along. So, anyways, verbal principles. There we go. Yeah. Done. Oh, goody. All right. Yeah, oh, for, for, for we got to know kids have a, yeah. uh, Let's uh, business manager. Report. Yeah, for a group that doesn't have a report. That was a darn good report. <laughs> so uh, now, so now you have to follow yeah, that up. Yeah, now I have to follow this up. Okay, so tonight we have for you a um, <laughs> draft of the, the budget. We also have a revenue report and a tax rate calculation. Great. The, this is really the budget report that we named first draft because even though you've seen one before that one was uh, riddled not, with errors yes yeah, so it so really was uh, go ahead actually enough inconsistency so we're going to ask you just to toss this first one you got you really can't make comparisons to it in many places the one from last month. right yeah. and just consider the one that Marilyn's handing out tonight draft one and you'll see at the top she put draft one and she dated it at the bottom so we're sure we're all going to be now using is this the different one. than what you emailed yes, emails? yes. this is oh. a new draft not terribly significant okay. but slightly the big benefit like of this one thing. the yeah. very first one you ever saw was one that um developed without really being having the chance to sit down with the principals to really figure out what, what's going on you know we did it remotely essentially so that's uh, one of the big reasons why it wasn't as complete as this one is. Okay. The other thing we'd like you to, to, to think about is that we will answer a number of your questions tonight but as a first draft this is not a final budget. There will be other questions that will surface that we may or may not be able to answer tonight but we will certainly get information back to you. Um, a first draft really is just that. It's a starting point for a discussion about where do we want to head with these numbers. One of the challenges, and I really want to um, sort of step out of this report and just say how much uh, Lindy and I appreciate having access to Maryland. When, when Bruce found her, he found a gem to bring into our district. Um, one of the things that has taken us extra time, and uh, we all 
all agree it's the right way to spend time is we are untangling a number of numbers that we are trying to make some sense of as a baseline. So it has taken a bit longer than perhaps any of us thought it would to really establish this first problem, this FY19, as accurately as we could. There's still some questions in that column that we continue to will continue to work on over the next few days. Um, but by far and large, we are moving toward a budget in which we have uh, confidence and understanding of the numbers. So with that, and I think one good example of that, even as you look in the very first batch of Function Code 1100 regular ed instruction, you look down to Object Code 211 HRA, uh, in FY19, there's nothing budgeted there. Well, you know that there are HRAs that well, what are is HRA? It's a health reimbursement health account reimbursement. that was um, negotiated and, and is in the FY19 budget, but not delineated under uh, the correct function codes and object codes. So we, we found a number of those things that we we have, when she said you have to untangle them, it's because a lot of things were grouped together. So not so much that they were necessarily missing from the budget, but they're not going to be in the correct categories and spots that, that they are <coughs> we moved them to. Uh -huh. And the state really demands that they be in the right spot. Um, they have changed coding throughout the years, mm -hmm. and uh, we anticipate they will change them again as they try and meet federal handbook um, standards that, that Vermont didn't always have the consistency in. But um, uh, we really needed to make it right and show it in the categories that we're supposed to be showing. So just to make one point, and then I won't do this throughout the budget, but just as, as a reminder, if you look at uh, the draft that we were first given, that we asked you not to look at, not to sort of to ignore. So of course, put some more. I, right? I, I know. <laughs> I threw it away already. <laughs> you, you can throw it away. In FY19, it shows zero, as, as Marilyn said. Yeah. In FY20, it shows 35605. If you didn't understand what we're saying, you would say, why that huge increase? It's gone from nothing to $35,605, when the reality is that is not what's happened. Right. So, so was that's it, the caution. Was to, to start right there with the health insurance, um, do, our, do, we have, do our teachers have an option between health insurance and an HR A account? It's a combination. <coughs> it's a combination. Yeah. So the way it's negotiated. Okay, they have a, a health insurance and they have an HRA. And an HRA, an HRA account. account. Okay. Now, um, when you say like there was no numbers for last year, I'm assuming that that HRA account was bundled in with the regular health insurance. It was, in some cases, it was bundled in in the regular health insurance. In um, another case, there, there was a line of $14,000 uh, that was defined as HRA administration. Well, the administration of the HRA did not cost $14,000. Okay. It's, uh, per user, it's like maybe 3 to $5 per user. You don't have that many users in your districts to make it equal $14,000. Uh -huh. So they did a combination of things, and that's why it's very difficult for us to go through and, and uh, we will be able to have ex uh, explanations so when, when uh, you know, a, a certain taxpayers say, this went from nothing to here, we can say this was in, because I understand we don't want to put it into here since it wasn't there, right. but we need to be able to tie that to something and say, if you looked at these lines, Here's where you, you can see, it. you know, you can see this $14,000 decrease from FY19 where it was in an administration line, right. and, and we can, we can, we can tie that together. Right. And that is going to be one of the challenges of explaining this year's budget. We will have to get through some of those and right, so we'll, we'll, we'll need to have right. We'll need to have and a written have narrative, a, a, a written narrative that we can we can produce. It doesn't yeah, have to necessarily be in the book, but it has to be them. able to. Yes, and just it's like here, let's go. Let's I yeah. think it might be wise. I would say right now, if she's available, I think it would be wise to invite Marilyn to that annual meeting. She may be. Yeah, yeah. it is yeah. very important. Well, and by no that time, we also have a business manager. I was going to say, Tara will be brand new, and right, you know, maybe it's both of you, but yeah. It, what day of the week is that? Fourth Tuesday in May. Okay, it's a Tuesday. Oh, it's an evening. Which we're going to 
Well, we're going to discuss that later. Okay. Oh, okay. Well, uh, so not now, so fast. Not so fast. Well, wait, I will only say that I'm actually retired, and <laughs> they're familiar with that word. <laughs> and um, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> really. On Tuesday nights, I go to Connecticut to watch my brand new oh granddaughter. Yeah, they're familiar okay, with that. So, <laughs> and we're not related. <laughs> okay. Um, All right. Okay. So. Uh, what will be beneficial, though, is as the board looks at things, because we do want the written backup on key areas that you know that your constituents are going to ask about. It's very helpful for you to jot that down, email it to, to one of your principals, and they'll forward it to me or, or something to say, hey, make sure that we know how much is expended in health care and HRAs this year, and what's it you know, what's the increase next year? We know that the premium went up to 11.8%. Uh, the overall difference in the, the budget between those two items is um, closer to a 20% increase. Well, why is that? Well, it's because, right. because you know. So when well, you see things like that, I, it's great that you identify it because you know someone in the audience is going to be identifying that too. Well, are we going to just kind of, I mean, I have yeah, a that's number what I would suggest, okay. to go through, and then the principals can also, you know, right. they know this also. Okay, so we'll just start right with the 1100 and just try to go right down, so rather than jump around. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Health insurance is just simply a uh, teacher's choice. Yeah. Uh, at this point, the contract calls for 80-20 on all of the plans, with the exception of a single person this year. It's 89-21, so the board pays 89 and uh, uh, 19, I mean. And right. it's just a different split for the single Eight, person. Nine. nine. No, it's not. It's no. 81. It'd be 81 and 19. Yeah. 81 and 19. Like, where's I that, know what those, you meant. Those <laughs> 81 and 19. And the policies really did go up 10 some percent? 11.8 uh, percent. 11.8. Wow. They went up? They went up. <gasps> policies went up. And then that's just strictly a calculation. Um, yeah. We went through uh, staff member by staff member, employee by employee, to make sure that we had everybody on the spreadsheet that was eligible for insurance. That was one of the mistakes in the first draft. Not everyone who was eligible for insurance was showing up in the numbers. Okay. They were getting insured, but they weren't showing up in the numbers. HRA we just talked about. FICA is just the yeah. standard. Um, 234 Vermont reti Retirement Beamers, that's the Vermont Municipal Employees Retirement System. So those would be the, well, your support staff, the three paras that are involved in the preschool and say um, Vermont Municipal Employees Retirement. Employees Retirement. And that is for, I'm sorry, go ahead and finish. Parents. Oh, parents. 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 Workers' comp, those are pretty straightforward. Dental insurance, again, is just usage. The contract provides through Delta Dental a single employee benefit. Um, life insurance. That's another example where it was lumped together somewhere else. Life uh, insurance was. Yeah. And wh why it was $39 in <laughs> one spot when, in fact, mm -hmm. you know, your life insurance is per. FTE of teacher is closer to ninety dollars. <laughs> so I don't know why that was just such a fractional there, but uh, okay. we divided those out throughout the budget too. Long term disability, and that's also divided throughout the budget. So in this case, that's where it was lumped under eleven hundred, and now we sorted it out into the various functions that those teachers actually existed. Okay. Yeah. Okay, contracted instructional services, there's a pretty significant leap there. Part of that is new monies in the line item, and part of that is some of those monies had been budgeted elsewhere in a previous year. So it is a fairly significant increase, but not to that extent. What is in that 1100 320 um, is funds for One Planet. Uh, Rochester uh, has $8,500 in there for One Planet, Stockbridge has $7,800. Uh, there is also a 0.5 um, ELL and interventionist position in there. There is $3,000 in there for artist and residents. And then there's uh, $10,000 in there for the math consulting work that the board spoke about at the last meeting. So that's a... Uh, that's 320 you're talking about? Yes, 1100, 320. 
Now, um, I know the Artists in Residence was brought up last meeting. Has it, that ever been in their budget before that they were aware Someone of? told me three or four years ago, Rochester had done Artists in Residence. I don't know about Stockbridge, and I keep... Sometimes it's been in the budget, sometimes the PTO has... PTO. Yeah, okay. okay. So this year we put some funding in there for it. Um, the initial um, explanation had some funky notes about one planet. Is there any other one planet money at elsewhere in the budget? There is. There is. Okay. Because right now your school wide program supports part of that. So it's showing not only in the um, general fund, one planet, but also in the title fund portion of, of your budget. Okay. So it's. It's partially supported by grants. Part, okay. And I think for the after school so for the um, homework help. Right. Okay. Does that answer that? Yes. You sure? Yes. Any other questions on that one? Anyone? Okay. Uh, 340. Um, 11 under 340. That's another significant increase. Primarily, what's in here are all the uh, special field trips that the schools yeah. have become very uh, used and supportive of youngsters going on. So yeah. there's the winter wellness skiing. Uh, the cost for Rochester next year, uh, the estimated cost is 85.50, and the cost for Stockbridge is 43.45. There's a new program we we've added in here that we hope to make happen next year, and that is a program that drown proofs our kiddos. So it's a swimming program for K through three youngsters. Oh, that's great. Yeah. Uh, Where is that at VTC? Uh, actually, Janie, this is this is very helpful. I think to a lot of schools to providing these programs. There is a group that contacts schools, finds out what your desires are, what your numbers of kids are, etc. Then they locate pools that support that. Mm -hmm. So I can't say it'll definitely be VTC next year, but I'm guessing that's where they'll head for our kiddos. Um, but they actually do the legwork of finding the pool, awesome. staffing it with certified Red Cross. Life, lifeguards and instructors. Oh, that's awesome. So the goal is by the end of third grade, we're not looking to do Olympic swimmers, but we are looking if our youngsters fall out of a boat or fall off a dock, slip into a stream, they have the skills to get themselves back that's safe. Really great. So we're, we're hoping. Do you know? do you know what's the name? Um, I, can look at I actually have it, but I don't have I don't, it on the tip I, of my I tongue. I think they also educate about shallow water blackout. They, yes, they do. So right. you do not have any prolonged um, breath holding in your water. That's really great. Yeah. So the num number of deaths that are actually caused by that. Yeah. That's a that's a that's a really switch in thinking for kids. They think if they hold their breath in the water, they're going to be fine, and that's one of the things that they are doing a lot of education on. It's not like swim lessons. It's like actual survival skills. Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah, the other really thing we have in there is we have Key Waden. Uh, that's a week-long experience for our uh, older kids. Uh, we have Colbert in there. That's a one-day trip for our fourth graders. And then we have... Is that a new thing? What is that one? Uh, that's It's the Holbert uh, Environmental Center, which is... Like an outdoor classroom. Is that building? Where are we going? It's new. No. I want to go. <laughs> is, it, is this on Lake Fair? Uh, Keek is on Lake Fairley. Holbert is down on, um, I'm sorry, Key Wade is down on Bombazine. Holbert's up towards Fairley. Key Wade is on Dunmore, not Bombazine. <laughs> don't have to look at that one. So that is really what amounts to the addition of there. A little bit I will say about that. In both schools, I think, for, for a period of time, some of these programs have been um, paid for by parents with scholarships available. It's becoming increasingly difficult. There's more youngsters that need scholarships. It's becoming increasingly difficult to find scholarships. There's at least a kiddo or two whose parents uh, won't let them accept scholarships. If I can't pay for it, my children don't go. Really, if it's a part of our curriculum, which most of these are, or programs that we value, then we shouldn't be asking parents to pay. It should be part of our expenditure. Yeah, absolutely. Which is why in this first draft, we put them in here. We'll see where this goes, but um, that's where that piece is. Let's see. Tuition to Vermont LEAs, that's for our choice kiddos. We have verified every single child that shows up in that number in what school they attend. 
awesome. Okay. The only place we've had to make guesses is for sixth graders moving on to seventh because they haven't made their choices yet. But what we've done is taken the profile of Stockbridge and put most of those kids in at the Woodstock tuition because that's where most Stockbridge historically yeah. have gone. And then we did Middlebury for um, Rochester and then we put in um, a couple of other schools just so we get the best balance we can get. And tuition to private sources, that's where the private school that kids choose to go to pop in. And that's an actual number of kids. I think we threw one in there for sixth grader. Didn't we? Did we throw one sixth grader in there or not? I don't remember. But so what we've done is we went through, Lindy and I, and we took uh, we took the list um, both that we've been billed for, so the tuition reimbursements, invoices that we've received. We confirmed uh, every youngster in every address, and we're confident that those numbers reflect uh, to the to the best that we can anticipate the sixth graders um, an accurate number for tuition. Mm -hmm. So it shouldn't be it shouldn't be off by a whole lot. But that is another example I was of where you say. saw everything was budgeted in one quantity. So it needs to be divided into whether it's a public outlet. And you can see where sure. it shows no expense, and then it shows an expense of 294000 Right. Now, in the past, and I, I don't see why we wouldn't do it again, we've, we've given a breakout of which schools, you know, not by name, but we've said that we've Except broken that out and said five kids are going to Woodstock, two kids go to Rutland, 11 kids go to Sharon Academy. Um, what they, and, that they have in their notes is 22, Middlebury, 1, Millbrook. They have that. Right, right. We just... Just in the, in, at least in the, the reports yeah. previous, and you've got it's the always been a, a grid. Right. That, that, so we can do one that. of those so for yeah, the annual should. meeting night crop to show right. that if you want. Mm -hmm. All right. Is that a grid that you actually published in your yes. annual report meeting? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So we have to remember that. That was published in the report? Yeah. So we'll use it, we'll make one for the annual report, and then we'll use it at the annual meeting. Mm -hmm. Does anyone go to the, the shower patch? Yeah. Yeah, that would be under the private. That would be the private. That's the private. Actually, this year, from Ro I'll just give you an example. So, from Rochester this year, we have one, two, three, four, five kiddos going to Sharon Academy, and for Stockbridge, I, there's one. I think. no, there's two. Well, there's more. Remember, one, two, this is the projection three. for next year. Right, but there's three between <laughs> nine through twelve. Three, four, four, not including the current twelve graders. Oh yeah, right, four. Four from stop which one is. Yes. Yeah. Not including the current twelve years. Yeah. Now this is an interesting one. I'll say it in kind words and then I'll let Marilyn describe it the way she wants. But five sixty eight, Votech tuition on behalf. The state of Vermont likes to tell us that they're uh, contributing to reducing the cost of the Votech tuition to our technical centers. And where they get the funding source to do that is in line 568. They ask the local districts to raise that money, and then they, then they turn around and give it back to you. Yeah. Yep. yeah. So it, it's, it's on like a six semester rolling average, yeah. right? That's yeah. It, yeah, that's exactly what So it it's is. in here, but it's also in the revenue. Is that what you're saying? It is. Right. It'll show you up as a revenue. It, but right. it's your revenue. You're yeah. paying yourself. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> fund. Yeah. Um, tuition to other folk. That's pretty surprise. Yeah, there's, there's, so there's a local portion to the Boat Tech oh, that's that on behalf of the Even though you, you put it's it in your ed fund, you have to show it two different ways. Right. We're raising both of those. Um, General supplies went up. Part of that is going to be because of equipment. It has to be um, above a certain level, and if it's not, then it's got to be. It a supply. Right. And I actually tried over vacation to calculate that out to see how much of an increase that actually is. It looks to be a fairly small increase. In other words, <coughs> most of that money is in other... Plus preschool. It's in, there, right? it's in equipment line items throughout so the budget. So pre-K's in here too. Okay. Pre-K's in here too. Separate, yep. okay. this is, I'm sorry, I should have said yeah, that from yeah. the will not be grant funded next year, so it has oh. to be put oh. into Okay, so... Okay. This general includes so our free cash. This yeah, is a free case. Yep. Um, so, right, with both the uh, supplies and the books and periodicals, mm -hmm. they both have increases. There's nothing major in there. It is just, just pulling a term request. Yeah. Okay. 
Yeah, right. Part of the books and periodicals, part of that increase is probably more of a legitimate increase. One of the okay. one of the things we're working at is um, classroom libraries are an integral part of reading instruction, and. Uh, though both schools, I think, maintain good school libraries, our classroom libraries in many classrooms were severely outdated. They had books that weren't appealing to kids, books that had torn covers, kind of books that were yellowing a little bit, some pages might be missing, and not a lot of variety. You know, you couldn't go in and find some rich poetry and rich nonfiction. And so part of what we're doing here is budgeting to upgrade classroom libraries so that teachers will have the ability, the opportunity to buy more books. And we're watching pretty carefully. Well, not really, we have to watch. Teachers are on board with us. They're going to be watching very carefully about the types of books they select for their classroom libraries. I was just, it was actually one question like that I was genre, like not Right, right. That, because it, I was I was looking it up last night to be sure, because it's a question I have for Mary Ellen, because I, I the, the classroom libraries are essential if they're used appropriately. They can sure. also not be used appropriately, right. but if they are used effectively. Right. But it's said that by first grade, 40% of the books should be nonfiction. Yeah. By That's sixth good. grade, they should be 70% nonfiction. So did, are the teachers aware that they should? They're doing an audit of their. Right. So okay. that's one thing. That and there's a the great other. list out there. There's the, uh, the 250 best nonfiction exactly. books. Mm -hmm. for those and books. the other thing, um, Janie, that we're being very careful of is uh, one of the other criteria is that you need to look as a teacher at the uh, various reading levels in your classroom. Mm -hmm. Your classroom mm -hmm. library should have it at least, at a minimum, 20 titles for every reading level. So in other words, if I'm a reader and I'm reading at M, there needs to be at least 20 really good, rich books in my classroom library at level M. And these should all be different than library books? Different than library books. There's not the, even for the some of the part. library books come into the classroom for a while? You can do that, when but... you're doing like a specialized unit, but this, content, think of it as okay. like a beach read. Like you have an independent reading time and you want to, to be able to go over and like a book that they can actually read, not a book the shelf. that's okay. like... Way above their grade level, and they're looking at the pictures. Yeah. The book, they need to have like access. The okay. term was a beach read, but after Mr. Okay. It's so, it's so during the class time that they are, that they go over and they, they have like a free read kind of thing, right. and they're like not pulling their library it. book out of their cubby or whatever. Now there's a place for that kind of reading. There's a place for pulling your library book out of your cubby and just cuddling up in the corner and enjoying it, but it's not part of your yeah, reading okay. structure. structure. Okay. And in 730, you'll see the converse. You'll see where there was equipment last year, and now it looks like we're not buying any equipment. That equipment is moved up into the supply line item. Yeah. Uh, dues and fees. This is another one of, of, of uh, Marilyn's favorites, 232. I think it's a question you asked. I have a question. Okay. okay. Um, is this Beam Be Beamers or now it's been changed? Because you had it over here as Beamers. It's oh. everything. It's Beamers is separate than Visters. This is right. Visters. It was coded as Beamers. Okay, but it is Visters. But it's really it Visters. And what does that stand for? No wonder they were a little confused. Vermont State Teachers Retirement System. This, oh, this okay. ranks right up there with the Botech payback here. Um, at some point, Vermont realized that for too many years they'd been underfunding the teacher retirement system, yeah. so they had to create a new revenue stream. This is that revenue stream, so for every new teacher that you hire for the first five years they're employed, um, does the treasurer's office that sets that right? Treasurer's office yeah. sets it. Gives us a, a factor, and this year I think it's 1275 or 1279, so we have to pay 1275 for every teacher who we have employed between one and five years, and mm -hmm. you do that for, okay. so on their sixth year you stop paying for them. So every new teacher we hire for five years, we have to pay an amount. We get a different amount every year. This year it's 1270. How much does OPEB mean? Does that have a certain meaning? I want a dinner because I knew what that I have meant. to take her lunch. <laughs> <laughs> we had a bet. Who could find it first? She found it first. <laughs> so it's, post em it's other post-employee benefits. Good taking the time to look that up. <laughs> and I passed quite a few nice looking places on the way over there. <laughs> uh, 
Oh, you, 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 you're going to see if you're going to get the <laughs> She, answered, she answered, answered another really hard question, so I told her I had to throw in an adult beverage. <laughs> <laughs> Um, let me move down through. Our State grant retirement, let me just say oh, sorry. what that is. Yeah. That. Um, so this actually is your uh, people that are coded to the school-wide program. Another state treasurer fund thing was because they underfunded retirement for so many years, they discovered that, hey, it's legal for us to take a percentage of the grant to put back into the teacher's retirement. So what it's up to now is 19.25% of a teacher's salary, and it's only the teachers, not, not any support staff that but you don't fund teachers in the last WP, I think. Um, they <coughs> have to take that high percentage from their salary and give it back to the state treasurer so they can help fund the whole that they created for teachers this um, is on top of their salary? Mm -hmm. this, yeah. is, okay. this is yeah. what the portion of their salary that we send to the state of Vermont. So okay. they get their whole salary. They get their whole and salary. We send 19.25% of that to the state of yeah. Vermont. And that's from um, all teachers. You know, for grant. any teacher Anybody is paid by a grant. grant. Oh, okay. Yeah, and a federal grant. grant. I shouldn't even say a, a federal grant. grant. It's federal grant. All right. Which school wide is the title funds. So that's what that is. Why it's showing up in my pivot table at the bottom of that list? You're still trying to figure <laughs> out. Well, both of them are there. That's yeah, the problem. Yeah. I just can't figure out well, why can't I make it go up with the other two? Right. But, but I'll make it go away. Those are right. one of the two that were doubled, so you made it go away. Yeah, it's only your that's one. true. But it, it still shows up at the bottom. I can't figure out how to make it. Okay, okay under art, art, you're going to see a similar thing in supplies. Uh, I think some of the some of the salaries went down this. Year. Uh, well, in this particular position, the position was reduced. It's a three, it's a point six position now, okay. and it, it what was is this, year? this year it's point six. Last year it was. Uh, was and what is it next year? It's going to stay point six at this point. So, so it was budgeted. In raw test. Was it budgeted incorrectly? Yeah, it was budgeted at a higher percentage than it. Than it actually had. was. Hey. In raw in Rochester, yours is saying. Okay, so point two two. So right. though Fair. though the intention was a point six. The calculation was incorrect on that. And then Our everything else budget. down the line is pretty, pretty so Do we know what it was budgeted at, like 0.7 or 0.8? When we went through that, we did identify it, but I just can't remember right it's now. 0 .8. Was it 0 0.8? I think it the salary that they picked 6. up was 0 0.8. Um, uh, maintenance went up a little bit, quite a bit. At, well, you know, not a lot of dollars, but. That's that the because the kiln is going to need repairs in Rochester, and you guys will all be serviced. Right. Stockbridge is going to be serviced. Not the boiler. Right. And Rochester's going to be repaired. Okay. Um, PE, that's gone down significantly because that is a shared employee. We purchased that service through the supervisory union. We did that in order to offer a full-time position to a PE teacher. So they work part-time in Rochester, not in Stockbridge. And then they Stratford. were in Stratford. So, okay, so, so that's again. where you're going to see in, in object code 320, that's right. increased, but the salary decreased. Right. Mm -hmm. Going to that um, increase on 320, is that, no, that number all-inclusive that's Yes. in their health insurance yeah. and payroll tax and stuff. Yes. Okay, and so explain to me how it is set up. We have two separate PE teachers. PE teacher at Stockbridge. Okay. PE teacher at Rochester. Okay. Two different people. Two, two different people, and mm -hmm. one of them also works with another Stratford. Cool. <coughs> they <coughs> are and employee in the SU. And it's done through the SU yeah. rather than the individual. That's okay. the only way we could do that. Okay, so one of the line items is essentially the Rochester other item is right. Like the it yeah, pretty much works out that way. Yeah. Down there yeah. But also, what, right. right. When what I had asked though is the teacher's salary yeah, that's good. would yeah. also need to add oh, right. the <coughs> taxes and unemployment right. and and Which stuff. Why it's only like our person here is not eligible for benefits for PE. Well, the oh, oh and you right. Yours is the salary. 
Um, right, mine is the salary. Yours is the salary. Okay, and then they're not, they're not worth, they're at point two, so they're not eligible. Yeah, eligible, and that's, and that's why it's not more. That's right. Got it, got it. Okay. Right, but it's got their, it's uh, the, that, that 18498 would still have, yeah, they're not eligible, not eligible for benefits, but they're, they're we're, we're paying their FICA and whatever. Right. Right. The, the teacher that you're purchasing from the SU, um, that's, he's, he's got benefits and everything in there. Right. But so it's we're, a contract of purchase service so we for you. Our portion. Right. Yeah. Right, that 18 yeah. includes all that. Is that good? Um, <coughs> that is good for that one. Yep. Same, 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 done. same question for supplies since we moved, you know, things that used to be equipment. Right. And so that, um, I'm sorry, go ahead. The, again, that Vermont State Teachers Retirement Other Post-Employed Benefits, right? Yeah, it doesn't link on it. <laughs> will reappear right. in all in different departments. For example, if you look and yeah. use it right top of the next page, right. that is a new teacher we've just hired, and so you will You'll find see that. it there, okay, because it's the new teacher. Yeah. And you'll see it there, should that teacher remain with us for the next four years. And then we would see will it we see it there twice, because there's two teachers? Um, mm -hmm. Yep, and it yes. is not reduced by FTD. Isn't that nice? You know, so it's not per rate. So if you're a half time, you pay the same yeah. amount. If you're full time, you pay the same amount. Which is really. Yeah. <laughs> well, it's really different. What do you mean you see it there twice? Well, the, the, the line, the 232 line under the music section is 2550, not 1275. Oh, oh, I see. So it's 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 the amount because there's two it. people. Yeah. Okay. And it's not related to FTE. It's just because there's two people. And no. Have to pay all that. No. 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 There, shouldn't That's, there should not be two music people. Person. One person. Oh, it is the same it's person. The same yes. Person. Oh, so that's, that's a mistake on our part. Okay, that's good. That's right. woohoo. We just cut the budget. Okay. <laughs> that's good. Yeah. So okay. it should only be a 201275. Right. And her salary went down again as well. Um, different person. We had a different music teacher last year, and they were at a higher placement on the salary change table. of yeah. change of staff. Right. Um, but it is also true that on the um, visitors, you get, even if you're part time, a point five FTE. If you're new, it's still it's still. 5. Oh, that's yeah, that's it's that hurts. right. But it's not so. But the, the the good thing is is that it's per person. So it's not the fact that we took a person. And they're 0 0.6 at one and 0 0.4 at the other. We have to pay the two. The, right. The, the, we true. double dip yeah. for them. We only pay for them once. That's our true. Full time. Right. And the other thing is, when we're able to do that, you get a higher quality pool, typically applying for a full time position than for a 0.2 or a 0.6. Right. Correct. Um, equipment, same situation with equipment. Uh, we moved it up under supplies, some of it. pretty much straight for music, special ed assessment. That's an assessment from the SU. Um, you went down a little bit, your portion of the assessments from right. the uh, SU went down. Well, well, that's always based on Debbie Matthews' best guess anyways, because that number Oh, we're on special, um, yeah, Overall, section 1200 special ed. Special right, and I did notice the note um, included that that is the preschool special education is in there too, the AAA Correct. program. Yeah, that would be all our special ed. Okay. Okay, athletics and co-curricular. It's primarily just co-curricular. We've added some monies in there um, for uh, a couple of stipends for people who might be interested in doing a drama club or a, or a student council or a Lego club or something like that. Um, robotics, a solid model. robotics, something like that. Yeah. Uh, there is no beamers in there. There are, because it, it's not typically a it's certified employee. employee. Yeah. yeah, it's just a stipend. Um, that's pretty straightforward. There's not a whole lot in there. Okay. Um, SAP counselor is no longer. Yes, me. That's what SAP is. Maybe I should yep. call it. Student, student assistance. Yeah. Uh, neither school has opted to. Uh, budget funds for that position or those positions right and that is generally taken over not by the by guidance. guidance right by the guidance okay. yeah. um and then we go to guidance and you'll see it's pretty straightforward right down the line who's doing more um again we have the the uh vistras Vistors, because again, it's a new employee. There's that 1275 that's coming up. Mm -hmm. uh, that's pretty mm -hmm. straightforward there. Then we move into health services. Okay. You'll 
see that's another one of those HRA issues where nothing was budgeted last year um, because it was bundled in one line item okay. and Maryland's broken it out appropriately. So, right. so the HRA was an option or has been there? It's yeah, not it's a, a contractual. Right. not part of the new contract that's been there. Mm -hmm. I don't know when you instituted it, but it's in the this, new contract. This year they, they're eligible for it. Uh -huh. They are also for next year. Okay. I think to break your stride, but uh, one of the things I think we forgot to mention on your 1100 um, function code. Oh, we're going way back. So way back. Well, you don't have to flip back, but I just wanted to mention that there's uh, we've also included three horizontal movements. Oh, okay. what does horizontal mean? That's right. It's a they're column. switching columns. So right, they've, they've got a master's degree or they've got another. Ah, oh, okay. Also in, there, also in there, we have two retirees. Retiree. One retiree benefit at Stockbridge, one at Rochester. One of those persons <laughs> oh, has a while ago, like that early. Yeah, they took like a four-year plan, I think. Right. One of those is done this year. One of those has one more year on their, on their payment. So that good point, Marilyn. Yeah, right. Sorry, so it's just back dawned to on me. Eleven hundred. <laughs> so is it? You said that this now includes pre-K. Did I hear that? So w what was paid for by the state before? And now we're paying more for pre-K. There was a state pre-K grant that paid like okay. 60, 60 or sixty-five, seventy percent of all the costs. Of the based on a percentage of, of the, your of your kids of your of kids the who are students who are eligible for free 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 right and it, only four year olds and it approximates 60 65 70 percent of all the costs. so now the school the grant is gone so now we have to pay full as a statewide thing i don't know if it's state or federal to be honest right yeah um, but yes we now have to right. we have to pay all yeah that. all right so we were doing guidance we were doing health um, you'll see under health, I had a question. Under, under 320, this is going to be a, a we're going to confirm this tomorrow, but we're 99% sure that that 8750 can come out of there. We think it is a duplication. Oh, yeah, to, that was um, that was one of my questions there. Do you feel true? Winter wellness. 1100, 340. I actually believe that it is. Uh, I think that it is, uh, let's see, uh, 22, 13, 320. The 22, 13 is, I believe that that's where it belongs. The 22, 13 is staff training. 320, right, exactly, because there is two staff trainings. One was for um, 9750 and the other one was for 8750. And I don't staff see- Staff trainings for what? Oh, we're in trouble. We, we didn't saying. give you any details, and that's almost ten thousand dollars. <laughs> Sorry, we're already in trouble now. Yeah. Okay, so what? Said to the other day, was it program? It's first draft. You can spell it out by second thank draft. You. Thank you. Program? No. Uh, Project? No. What's no. the big number that I get? No. It's touchscreen. Careful. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> what is it that you're looking for? It's program. Yes. Yeah. What are you trying to find? I'm trying to find. Um, if you do the uh, 320. Oh, just do 320. That would be the way out of the yeah. easier to do. do it that way. Because then you have them all next to each other. I think those that 2213, 320, though, we identified exactly what that's being spent for. I think for us, I can see where you think that that's where the duplicate is. I think for us, because the nurse oversees that winter wellness. I yeah, think she put she it in budgeted. the budget. She told us how she put the principal's in her budget. And we put yeah. it in our budget. Okay. But I see there was an amount, though. Okay, so here is what I was wondering, is these. We've got um, in staff training, yep. and this is this is in your spreadsheet. Is under 10 days at 175? Is that what that is? It is uh, 10 days at 175, $7,000 worksheet. Workshop we got that. 75, and then the other one is $8,000 workshop training that's summer 10 days. Right, that's not so. That's not this, okay? That is not this. We have those funds in um, 2213 320. 22 13 320. You only have not, you only have the 975, though, you don't have the 875. Uh, we have. 18500 don't we didn't it pick it up it did, i think that's 
I think, well, I think she's right. We are just guessing. You get a medal. But why? Do I get dinner too? <laughs> yes, you do, but you have to earn the adult beverage. You gotta come up, <laughs> oh, yeah, you have to come up okay. with another question. <laughs> All right. Isn't All right. that bizarre though? Because in the backup, it both showed under 2213, but it's picking it up under 2130. And it so that line should really be 2213 yep. and 320 should be 1850, is yes. what you're saying. Yeah, it should be a 2213. Uh, Okay. Yeah. Good it job. Should, it shouldn't Thanks. be in um, health. Definitely right. should not be in health. Right, but that's not the. It, it's moving. no it's longer. Not a it's not a savings. It's not a savings anymore. Place. But it just got to the right place. Thank you. Good job. All right. Yeah, really. See, I told you, you, you were an good. auditor. You know, you you would be a great auditor. <laughs> okay, I don't okay. see anything else down through there. Again, you see that visitors. Yeah. So 2190, Contract and Instruction for Services. Uh, what is that? Well, I'm just going to find that out. Oh, this is a note. <coughs> 504. Yeah. Okay. Those are 504 services. We have one youngster who has some uh, consultative services on their 504 okay. plan. And that's what that is. No, no transportation, uh, curriculum instruction, that's an assessment from the SU. Yep. Um, I think Marilyn said our overall assessment was, is it 11, it's down, you know, 11, 11. 11.9 or 11.4? Okay, we'll find out what that is. So it's not 9530, it's actually going to be 11 something. No, it's a percentage. It's the 11 a, was a percentage or something. Okay. That's the right number. Okay. Right. Um, staff training, uh, tuition benefit, that's, that's per contract. Contractual, yep. Yeah, we never budget the full amount. Typically people don't yep. always use the full amount, so we make a best guess based on a little bit of history. Right. Um, we've got a little bit of travel in there. We have contracted uh, instructional services. It should be the 18.5. Yes, that should be the 18.5. Thank you, Amy Will. I'm going to call that the Amy Will Memorial Fund. <laughs> um, and then moving through into library. Salary goes down, insurance goes up. The position went down, cost of the insurance goes up. I'm not sure the 2897 is accurate. That was one of those, Carl, because um, okay. my belief is the plan has stayed the same, and that's just more than 11%. Well, but notice the HRA is, is $420. And so there was nothing. And there was nothing. Right. So are you on the knees? I am. I have a degenerative. Will you do that? <laughs> <laughs> Please. That's what this SU <laughs> I have a degenerative disc, so it, it, it didn't matter what type of chair I was sitting in, at some point I have to stand or kneel. I'm Catholic, so kneeling is a second. There you go. Second day. So am I. That's why we get along so well. Yeah. Oh, another slide bar. There you go. Just a little too much information. <laughs> All right, I'm just going to stop now. I'm, right on. I'm not answering any more questions. <laughs> People have questions you'll have to ask me. Um, this is pretty straightforward with just some changes year to year. For the library? For the library. For the library. Okay. And the academic what? assessment, the 6,000, is that star 360? That is star, star 360. Now, is that the, um, what's the cost? Is that really the Actually, cost of the can, program? Is that we the, have a better number We have now. a better number So now. it'll go down. With, um, Mary Ellen negotiated a deal for the entire, school district so we got a much better deal so it'll go down so it is at literally each seat basically in front of exactly us. Okay. three times a year yeah okay yeah but there is a better okay now we're into board of ed um so 310 the 11 the 2310 310 that's for the administration of the hra Right. So that's where the monies are found for that. Yep. As Marilyn said, it's not an expensive program to administer. So those are not the actual benefits themselves, but just the oversight for the program. Um, printing, binding, travel, dues and fees. Yeah, that 
insurance that went down that um, it's the same insurance it's your Arizona mission general yeah. liability type insurance it, um, <coughs> it it significantly higher than it actually cost you so this is um, what it costs you plus five percent okay so that's really the only big change in Okay, the audit, we'll move down to the audit. That's Can I a clarify oh, something. Yeah, go ahead. Um, so, your board treasurer, you don't pay anything to your board treasurer. Is that something that at an annual meeting somebody says? We couldn't find any backup for that. I mean, then there's nothing been paid out. No, um, because so they were, it's, it's because it was. Um, oh, no, I, think it was, I think it was determined. Yeah. Uh, well, when we first we merged, it was as part of our that, that January meeting where we had to go through and set various you know stipends. I think it was just laid out there as uh, as the amount. I don't believe the treasurer has taken it in the past. Okay, why they have not? That's why yeah, I, I just wanted out. to verify. Well, I thought that and I, that that clerical salary because that's for clerk right the which is also the yeah. treasurer perhaps and I, it, but it was okay. there, there, it's in there well, as well then. okay yes. that's fine but i don't i can't give you the amounts i have to look up that came from an actual you know as i looked into the system as the okay. actual so that amount i think is okay i yeah. just was questioning whether or not you also had a separate treasurer yeah. but it doesn't sound like you do we have a separate treasurer but both it, I, I believe that both that that money is in the that, clerk. The clerk oh, line. Too. It's not broken. Do out. we know what we paid the church? That's what I said. I don't know. Okay. I don't believe uh, we did. Right. I think we were going to pay Joanne, and then she didn't want to do the job, and then so, yeah. Kathy stepped in and just oh, kind of did yeah. it for a year. And All right. So I think that is something at your annual meeting. They actually vote on, so if they they right. may vote, okay, here's a stipend for that. We can always change this right. at that time, but but you need right remember now, to put that on the warning for your annual meeting if you want to take action. Yeah, it has to be a separate. Has to be a separate item. Yeah. and we might be able to look back on the minutes then of what it stated that the treasurer draw. I know last year I couldn't find it. I, I did look at that and I was surprised that. Okay, so I went back one more year and I couldn't find it, but I thought that was because it was pretty large. So it was, it was Our audit goes away, and, and, and that, that goes that's to baked into that's baked into the fiscal ser services 2510 593. The, the that's, that's correct. Right. Okay. Uh, legal, we just level funded. We're assuming yep. that's okay. Um, 232593 that's just an assessment from the uh, supervisory union right and that's that's that, that breaks out that, that breaks out the different uh, the different things it used to be that the business office was rolled into that same line <coughs> or that yeah. same yeah. overall entry and now there's a, a now separate they're under fiscal correct? services yeah. okay. okay principal's office um, pretty straightforward two principals two and a half clerical people, health insurance, just based on what people take. There's that HRA again. <coughs> there was nothing budgeted. <coughs> you see Beamers popping up again. Uh, tuition benefit. Uh, staff people have access per contract to funds for workshops and conferences. Lindy and I have access to funds for workshops and conferences. Workers' comp. Nothing down through here. That's what true. is the contracted instructional services at 320? Is that ours? It's kind of always been there. Yeah, it's, I think I found a note on that. Okay. Okay. That's one of the ones I still have to look up in. I have a question mark right here on it myself. I don't have an answer for that tonight. That's one of the questions that I have. So we will get that in the final draft. I think um, last year there was some discussion about the FTEs of the admin at Rochester versus Stockbridge. I was wondering if there's any efficiencies that can be made, um, you know, with the two schools working together. Um, you know, do we need the one and a half versus the one? Um, there was a question last year. So you being another question. 
question. Assistant. Right. Just trying to think of any of, you know, how can we work efficiencies throughout the budget to kind of meet the goal of what we're trying to do here? I think what slowed us up a little bit this year was the change of administrative assistant here. Sorry, we didn't see it coming. And we, and we didn't have any ability to plan for it. You know, we didn't we didn't see it at all. Um, it was a good move. Though. Some it was a great move. Some of the um, some of the changeovers. Yeah, yeah, it was a it was. What a sense to me. I think it'd be impossible to do. At this, we really looked at this closely, Jenny, and it's um, what I can say at Rochester is that both of them pretty much are right out straight for the time they're there. Um, it's just the difference between 50 kids and 90 right. kids and 50 yeah, parents. Yeah, I'm just asking. And, another question came up last year. So yeah, I mm -hmm. it asking. Yeah, and it's a it's a very legitimate question. Um, the little bit of a complexity, not not tremendous, but just a little bit, is that the part time. Um, administrative or clerical position at Rochester now has just assumed the duties of crossing guard because we lost the crossing guard there on the road they know in 100 and we couldn't find anybody and she stepped forward and said that she would do it in the beginning and the end of her day so it kind of melds that in a little bit it helped us fill that position let me say that um, I think at one point you said that the students using the crossing guard are moving on next year do we have a crossing guard in here we have a crossing guard in here. The question will be how many youngsters do we have and does the board want to continue it if it's two youngsters, three youngsters, but for right now it is budgeted in here. It's under safety. We'll get to that shortly here if we have a problem, Brian. Um, so you're talking about the kids that are walking home? The kids, the kids that are, are walking home across. right on that brow of the hill. That's mm -hmm. where they have to cross. That's where the sidewalk ends on one side and moves over to the other. And it's, so the place. person is pulling down two salaries then they're pulling down the, the entry for the safety officer as well as exactly okay so it's yes. not no it's not that it saved any money it's that it, it's that she was willing to take the position which is a hard position to staff because it's 20 minutes in the morning 20 minutes in the afternoon and not many people give up their whole day to be paid for mm -hmm. two 20 minute slots yeah. so it would be nice if we'll have to talk about going forward if what our need is for right. sure um it, it, it is nice that we were able to get somebody who's in our building at, already to go up there and i have to say too at, at elementary schools of this size they're really jack of all trades to uh, i think people would be astonished yeah. Yeah. to know yeah. Yeah. what yeah. what they really, do. Uh, see the um and the thing about the thing that's going to be you know a, I don't say hard conversation, but it will be a conversation the board will need to have is that the, the safety position is like three or four thousand dollars. And you stop and think, okay, even if there's only one child crossing, is it worth one child getting in a dilemma for three thousand dollars or four thousand dollars? So that's sort of something that we have to keep in mind. Um, technology support. Uh, again, that's pretty straightforward. That's one of the places. Uh, supplies for technology 650 that's where we're putting our new um, Chromebooks that we're buying again that has to go under a supply um, equipment we need How some often do we need to buy new Chromebooks well if I believe what people tell me is accurate we haven't bought them in several years so I don't have an answer to that I'm Typically guessing their lifespan is three years I was going to say three to five years, years. we recycle like and replace Four classroom has the older computers, so as we put newer one, newer Chromebooks in the five six room, then we'll put the uh, sorry. And I think there's fifteen new ones coming to Stockbridge, I think, and twenty coming to Rochester. I think right, and that we'll will be this building will be good for a year. Right, it'll be up to date. Right. Our other so goal I, there is to so actually. I, yeah, our goal there too is actually to get on a cycle, so that we're doing a planned five years every year we're buying X. Um, fiscal, um, as far as the computers go, I assume that a lot of the stuff that was in the high school and that it's older technology now, anyway. And the other thing, to be frank, that happened with the machines in the high school is that they weren't, they weren't treated as well as they could have or should have with kids taking them back and forth and in and out. We found that there were 
remember that keypads didn't work. And I think some of them were old. Keypads didn't work. Certain keys didn't work. Screens were cracked. Uh, we salvaged the ones that we could. So I understand that normally supplies are, are going up because purchase under a certain level no longer counts equipment, they count as supplies. Correct. But our, so, so in other cases we've seen equipment go down and supplies go up. Here supplies went up $17,000 and equipment actually went up just a couple hundred dollars. But our software went down. What's the rule? 5000 5000 5, Anything under 5000 is so high? I think they made extra effort to make sure that they coded things you know, the way it's supposed to be. Because so, I know we went through that quite a bit. The Chromebooks themselves. So what are the what are the over $5,000 purchases that are in the, 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 the equipment line? I think those are the Chromebooks. I do think we put the Chromebooks on in there. So then what are the what are that $17,000 in the uh, supplies line? So mm -hmm. by supply line, you mean the, which? I mean the 24. Six, 650, 650 six went from 7267 to 24 grand. Okay. And in other in other situations, the, the the equipment line has gone down. The 730 line goes down, right. and the supply line goes up. In this situation, the just supply says, line uh, uh, more than tripled. It just says includes. And the yeah, equipment stays. So equipment just, and supplies. I think that's um, we're recalling our conversation with Mark. I think it's based on some expenditures and things that haven't been replaced in a while, like full headphone sets, like adds up and just gives you a buffer. But I'm not and. Uh, what were the other things? Speakers for classrooms. I, I'm not saying that that's what it totals. We don't have it broken down with a projected like. Right. But we just those need to be able to. Right. You know, no, the the right. argument of, of, of saying that equipment goes down, supplies go up because the purchasing hold, rules have, have right. changed. It doesn't hold right. here. So having some sort of backup to explain. And the equipment is up. where those Chromebooks are. Right. Right. Carl, under 650, like Amy's question, I have, I still have question marks here. So I need to break that 24 That'd be out. great. Thank you. Yeah. You may um, see a different and, number in the future. My question along with that is, um, how were we able to decrease the software to $4,000? Some of the software uh, the people are using is now free. I awesome. think that 17 might have been slightly inflated. I think some of it was at the middle and high school, though I couldn't uh, determine it, that for certain. It, no, because that, that, that would have been just last year. No, but I think it's a number they picked up from the middle and high school ah, and okay. in here. I so this is not, yeah, we I'm not certain what it is, but okay. I don't think it's all, I don't think that 17,000 is all elementary. The number plus. budgeted right now covers smart licenses smart boards, yep. Zulu, desk, um, malware, untangle, that untangle? malware, malware, untangle. some of that was an admin um, software. That's a number we'll check out for you, Jim Thank you. Those were 735, Okay. Um, there's the fiscal services. That's the business office. So that's in your short term debt. So when you take out the tax anticipation note. Okay. People understand what that is in anticipation of taxes? Yeah. Okay. Do we have, I mean, the $5,000 looks like just a placeholder. Do we have any actuals we could base that on? I, I don't have any. Okay. No, we could look in the system and find out if we can. Well, I could actually look at the last tax anticipation note too and see what they charge you. Yeah. Is. Maybe better we do a, a, a rolling three year average. Now, am I right in understanding that that gets paid back as soon as taxes are collected? We don't let that hang around all year and then pay it off, do we? Correct. I mean, I, I think we might have, we, we, I can recall in the past it getting paid off like a month late okay. because of cash flow issues. But it got paid off. It but it gets, wait till yeah, no, it, it, <laughs> if it did, there'd be, there, I'd be grumbly. There you well, go. Well, back in the days when you were making 14% on your money and you were playing the arbitrage, you didn't pay it off early. No, now that you're not making that, you pay it off early. <laughs> um, okay, SU assessment 2580. I'm sorry, I know I'm taking up time here. 2580, 593. That's our portion of um, the tech director in his. Oh, budget. yeah, I had lots of questions about this. 2580. So that's so so that's. What are we getting for that when we already have yeah, a line item of of. Uh, for uh, technology. Because again, if we're paying 11 some percent. Um, I will look into that for you. That was a figure that uh, Mark gave us. I should have explored it's that. More than 
Right, but we have. Um, it's more than one person. But we're paying them in 2490. We're paying for for people in 2490. We're paying for two full days yeah. at both buildings for twenty-five thousand dollars. Right. Okay. So, so that's that, the tech. That's the technician. That's, that's the tech. That's the guy coming to our place. Right. Two right. Because if this is if this is if this is just Mark. Twenty-five eighty. Yeah. What we're we paying eleven thousand for it. Mark's making one hundred and seventy-five grand. And he's not. That's not well, right. So well, you know, that nineteen four is something else where it's wrong. Right. Okay. Well, no matter what it is, what does Mark do for us versus what the are these people we're hiring to do technology? For he brings us. A, uh, a deeper level of understanding of your system compared to the techs. Who he supervises those guys. He, he supervises, supervises those the techs. guys, and he right. also does an awful lot of the. It's like the, the business solves manager the problem manages the when payroll they, clerk. When they they for instance, they can get our Wi-Fi. He, he was able to troubleshoot yeah. remotely and help that. I mean, and sometimes he'll be here for. He was here one of the times. Right, days that right. Just that. Okay. He was here. He was in Rochester. We ain't paying nineteen. Time. I mean, nineteen thousand dollars is eleven percent of one hundred seventy-five. Yeah. Well, that I will so, look. That I will look into. Yeah. Well, yeah. I'll, I'll we'll figure that out. Okay. But in terms of service, uh, we get a, a decent amount of service out of that position. It's really he comes to us when there are crises that the decks can't solve. Right, I have to solve everything from I can't hook my computer up to the smart board to... But the techs are working for him. Right. 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 He's got a system in place that they follow. He Can we get those? Work. Yes. Um, I think this number here was um, uh, 2580 is... That's marked, I and mean, I have twelve thousand dollars there on your tabs. It's twelve thousand oh, five hundred and sixty-three, and that then was your comment and that then twenty-five ninety five. Oh, I'm sorry. You go to to this um, oh, what is it? R S U D all type N A, uh, the second sheet, third sheet of the spread, the Excel spreadsheet, and then you go to um. Uh, 25 ah. 80 and 2590. There's also another, there's 2590, and that's not all in the budget. And yeah, you add the two of them here. together, it comes up to that 19044. Right. What's 2590? Um, what 20, 25, what is 2590? 2590 is, um, there isn't a 2590. Yeah. There so is no 2580. But there is in your in, in your spreadsheet. So your yeah, it says fix SU that assessment <laughs> grant okay. administration. So we will. So fix those are that both number. numbers combined. It looks like tech admin and grant admin is what that it looks roughly. That little rough estimate math. Right. If you add if you add twelve if you add those two together, you get that nineteen zero forty four. Right. So you have what what's on so your twenty five ninety is supposed to be a twenty five eighty. 2580, Well, wouldn't it should be a 2590? Well, you have a grant administrator written on that one. Yeah, that's that's the, those are old descriptions. Okay. That comment came from the system. And so what I had to do, like if you look at your tabs, mm -hmm. the pivot table is actually looking at this column. Okay. And not this column, because <coughs> this column comes from the system, but this was very inconsistent. So you know when you do build a pivot table, then it would have been twice as long right. because of so many inconsistent lines. So that's why I had to add that. It's great. But also, it should be 2580. But at the same time, we're questioning if his if it's if right, he should be that high right. anyway. So or once we get this, two, once oh, we get the number, potentially two people. I, mean, I know the, the total assessment is correct. It's just a matter of should some of it be technology versus other things. But I do know the total assessment is correct by the percentage. So we will get the number 19044 broken out. Okay. Right, and if that if part of that is supposed to be uh, something else, then it should be rolled properly. You know, make sure then right. that the 2320, where it's the executive uh, administration SU right. assessment, goes because of the grant. Right. Because right. If, if that's yeah. just Bruce, then we're paying Bruce like close to four hundred thousand dollars. I don't think I don't think it's <laughs> happening either. So it's hard to me. <laughs> Well, okay. it's not just the salaries, it's, you know, yeah. Sure, absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> All right, operations of building. Um, 
there's going to be several numbers here that are going to change in the next draft. Our maintenance, our supervisor um, has been out on leave. Uh, haven't been able to confirm some of these numbers with her, but I know there are a number of numbers uh, that will be coming out. For example, 420 cleaning services. I have no idea what that is. I have no Thank idea. Uh, she's never seen it. I've never seen it. It's, it was in the previous year's budget, and we have to figure that out. Um, yeah, so I, I was afraid to take it out because I wasn't right. sure. No, so. until we figure it out, we'll, we'll figure it out in the next draft. Um, we are having a bit of a dilemma, I'm going to say this, in snow and waste removal, so particularly waste removal. There is no competition. The price is something like, I don't know, three or $400 a week for a dumpster to be dumped, to be switched out. And uh, we need to try and figure out how to provide this service. And who, who's, I'm, I'm not Sella sure. or Abel? No, I'm not sure. Either one of us? No, not sure. Abel. But I, I will find that out. But anyways, that we're hoping to, to renegotiate. Um, it's not what the town, it's not what the town is using? No, the town, I'm not, I don't know, Jane. I'm not sure. No. Who uses it, or who it is. Under fuel oil. Um, that figure, I believe, is highly inflated. To date, we've used about $25,000, $28,000. Okay, so which I is can't great, because imagine. it has been a cold, cold winter. Right. So. right. Yeah, the total operation of building, I think, if this goes to the public, 14% yeah, increase. Yeah. They're going to... Yeah, some of these, some of these, okay. Jenny, uh, Jenny, we're going to bring, Jenny, we're going to bring down without <laughs> question. <laughs> Who are you talking about? <laughs> um, I will say we have to grapple with repairs and maintenance. The high school has not done well this winter. Um, we're having major issues with the roof. We're having major issues with uh, pipes freezing and leaking. Um, it hasn't done well. So topic for another night, but we do have to filter that into this building and operations for another year. Um, so basically um, the salaries are pretty accurate. The uh, health insurance So we've gone up $11,000 or uh, um, yeah, $9,000. Salary's gone from 93 to 66. Well, yeah, but then yeah, salary yeah, 105 and 108. That's 96.6, and then oh, it's, 100 it. Sorry, it's, a, it's 100 and, 105 and change. Right. Can we uh, hire another person? The 3,000, the 3,000, I'm, that's a piece that I want to talk with Marilyn about. I'm not sure the 3,000 is accurate. General salary? Yeah. Yeah, that doesn't make sense. It's for to have something to do with like what the summer, a summer was. And right, it includes the summer. There was three thousand dollars to put in for summer. Right, right. Just the, yeah, the, just the two. When you add one hundred five and one hundred eight, right. it was ninety six thousand last year, and it's like one hundred and five this year. So I'm wondering where that and I, extra nine or ten thousand dollars came from. Right, and as I said, this is the section I have to go over carefully with our maintenance person because I can't answer some of your questions here. I will be able to at the next meeting, but I can't right now. Okay. So um, the, the repairs and maintenance, is that a placeholder or are those things like the roof? Yeah, that there was. That was actually you know. her estimate. What we are hoping to get our hands on, um, Jenny. Jenny. I was going <laughs> to say Jenny. No, you won't. Yes, I was. Um, that's all right. Christy at the central so office calls Lindy and I Bonnie and Clyde. <laughs> yeah. Um, I'm you really don't look like a Clyde. She tried to buy that, and I was like, I really don't. <laughs> yeah. Um, what I need to get my hands on is what we've spent year to date on maintenance, and uh, Marilyn's going to help me get in the system and figure that out. Right. Um, and then I'll be able to make a better projection on some of these numbers. And you had noted that there was some um, uh, uh, bleachers were a possible discussion in that item, right. and, and that item, um, fixing tile in the multi-purpose room. This exactly. was some. Kind of start like to discuss further, right. right? The bleacher piece was to take out a section of the bleachers in the high school because they don't they don't pass muster anymore. And um, the point is, we don't have to take them out. We just have to keep them locked against the wall so they can't be pulled up. We can take them out at another point in time. But the estimate for that was like eleven thousand dollars to take out the bleachers. So they just to just take them out. Such a racket. Just to take them out. That is a racket. You yeah. get the bleachers. <laughs> it's a racket. 
Yep. So anyways, wow, another business to go into. <laughs> <laughs> Buildings and grounds, uh, you will see some changes in those figures in draft. Okay. Week. While you're doing that, if, uh, again, six, uh, 610 supplies. Uh, goes up. Are you staying the, in buildings and grounds yes, right now? Okay, uh, yes. Yeah. Equipment stays flat, so we, we're not. You know, the idea that our equipment purposes decreases our supplies doesn't seem to be borne out here. So just some understanding yeah, between seven thirty and six ten. Yeah. Yeah. Do they have Did some? Did they actually ask for a specific piece of equipment? Yeah, there was a small long tractor, but I think she's rethinking that. Oh. Okay. Uh, this might be one place Carl Ward's legitimate. That the sure, equipment right, typically yeah. is is pretty costly. And, and that's fine. I just, you know, under, un understanding what, what backs up that, that number. Right. Is, oh, is, I had a question. Confidence. 490 water treatment. Is this for testing Stockbridge water? Yes. A month? Because you have to do, do every it monthly month. and then it, and it's sending it. bucks every yeah, month. And sending it down to Endine and. The comp center. Yeah. Like, yeah. And that has always been there. It just was buried someplace else, or is this something. You know, yeah. Uh, I think it was there. always there as a thousand dollars. This is a more accurate number based on what we've been paying month to month. Okay. Twenty six thirty four thirty one is another number that I want our custodian to clarify for me, so that's subject to change. Uh, then we get into the transportation piece. And I thought we had a flat contract. Why is our transportation going up? No, it goes so up. It, it's uh, you have a contract, but it's an increase. escalating. Yeah. Okay. Every year. Okay. Each year. Of? Um, it's around 3%. Okay. Field trips, we knocked that down a little bit. We felt that we can do what we want to do jointly across schools, et cetera, for a little bit less than we had actually budgeted last year. Um, food service is a big is a big uh, challenge for us. We are trying to figure out that 15,000 does not seem to be a reasonable number. We know so. how we, we got that number because it's a three year average, but instead of, uh, Amy pointed out, it looks like it's a three year average after the subsidy and not prior to it. So we have to look at the audit and see what we actually ended up with in food service for the last three years. So that number will probably go up. I'll buy it. <laughs> <laughs> My father was a beer distributor, so <laughs> there you go. <laughs> and then um, maybe somebody in the board can help us with this. We weren't able to get into the system yet, or it actually was in a book that the new business manager had. But that's worth <laughs> uh, That's right. Uh, what would be the projects that we're still paying principal on? Is it? That was what I was going to ask. <laughs> I mean, in general, yeah, that's anyone. been. You know, in, in, in previous years, at least on the Stockbridge budget, that's been the uh, no. It's well, it's 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 when you run a deficit, you can you can automatically take a deficit and spread it out over three years. So you so think this is related to a deficit, not a you product, don't think it's not a project, project of some not sort? a bonded debt? Like I, I don't I don't know if there's a. a I don't think we've had a deficit. That's. In, in the last couple of years. Typically, so that's that's yeah. typically where it's been there, but Stockbridge doesn't have a bond. That, you you definitely eight, don't have this, a bond. Is, that, is that the Rochester I'm bond? I thought the Rochester bond out. was paid off. No, there's. I, I don't know the answer yet, but I can What do we find have a bond for in Rochester, though? What did we build recently? What have we done recently? All the um, elementary sources. I'm thing on the elementary school. I'm not sure that got, I thought that got taken care of, but there was a um, septic problem two years ago. We didn't, take a bond we didn't take a bond. No, we just paid for it. I think. No, we haven't taken a bond in a number of years. Um, well, maybe this is that's the only costly thing. Because yeah, basically, the way it's coded, redemption on principle would tell us that it was some sort of bond that we took out to do a project. I, I right. could yes, and I could go Let's to figure the that out. Bank and we will actually check and see. Because I thought we had. We will figure that out. We're paying down the principal. And we're also still paying interest on it. So, and I sir, you, did you say that uh, Stockbridge might have something, but Rochester? No, I'm saying that the way around. Around. In, in, in in around. Way around Rochester has something. <coughs> I don't. I don't know. They pulled. They were pulling out plans from what? 2008. Well, that's the most. And that would be the part the, of the building, right? Right. Exactly. The um, library here. Rochester so is it the southern end of the building? I don't know. Is it the southern end? I'm just taking okay, a so shot at it. Is, 
here, here's 40, 50, 65. That's what it should be. Okay, 65. so you have a, you, you have two. Yeah, you have a, a $40,000 principal. Yep, and then a, and then a $25,000 payment. So there, there's your 65. Yeah. Mm -hmm. What was yeah, that on? What it, it doesn't say what it's on. One's, they're both with the municipal bond bank. One was taken out in 2002 and one in 2012. That's probably what it is. 2012, though, would not be the addition. Computers? 2002? Do you, do you bonded something for 20, for, for 20 years? One's a 20 year and one's you a 10 year. bond for 20 years. Well, you can go up to we 30. Can, we can find They're both with the bond bank, so we can yeah. figure that out. Thank you. I mean, I, I, I just don't know. Can I just see? You can actually get your um, schedules from the internet from the bond bank. So I just pulled one up. We're looking for forty thousand dollar one. You get dessert. Oh, I got dessert now. Two thousand two is the forty thousand one, and two thousand twelve is the twenty five. And that brings us to the bottom of the budget, and Carolyn's going to share some. So, what does that Avenue mean? Avenue now? Tax rates and things like that. So, let me, um, let me pass around the and then you can pay. give us some direction. So, I did uh, end up getting from the auditor, I said, I, really, I got a meeting tonight, I really need to know at least their fund balances. So this is a fund balance that Bill, the auditor, sent me. Um, for Rochester, the FY18 fund balance was 235396. For Stockbridge, it was 185004. And notice that you committed $181,639 to fund this current year. 2019. So at the end of FY18, which they audited, they're not taking into account in the two in the two numbers that equal over 400,000 the reduction of the 181. So I did that. So I said, you know, take those two fund balances minus FY19 that is committed of the 181. So you have a total of 238,761 that you could use to offset. budget. So um, now until I see the actual audit, I have an email from them, but I want to really see the audit to really verify that. But right so now, this committed um, is is really from 17 though? Yes. Thank you. Yeah. So you can be an auditor. <laughs> <laughs> so what, is, what kind of percentage does that lower if they were applied this to Percentage does it lower? Um, yeah. I'm not sure what percentage you're above talking. The cap? You're above the cap, even with it. Okay, let's, let's just go through the whole revenue. So on interest, uh, five hundred dollars interest of money in the bank, so to speak, what you earn. Tuition, that amount for tuition for this current year's budget is higher than what we could come up with for next year. So. Um, pretty good about what we're projecting for that tuition number. Um, the pre-K tuition, I've only got three <coughs> in there. I have no idea on the pre-K. I mean, obviously, they budgeted for maybe five for this current year. Yeah, we did. But um, I only chose three. So we, you know, do we know how many we have? In, I, I think oh, we no. kind of looked at talking about in anticipation of next year? No, I was wondering what we currently I think we do know what we currently have, and it might have been three. Okay, but I did not remember on Okay, that's fine. Um, e rate, the, uh, this is a number I got from Mark. This year you, you were going to receive 3000 because of some work that you had done um, throughout the year, but he said next year it's only going to be 80% of your, your internet charges. So he told me what that was, so it's 80% of, of those charges at 1632. Rentals, I don't have backup for that. I mean, then you've always had 2,000 in rentals, so. And the same with um, miscellaneous, is just a different donation, just sides of things, maybe some sales, fix sales. Oh, those guys, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, got it. So, rented chairs to weddings. <laughs> so 
note that your local source revenues is down by 16%. Then, um, kind of skip over Ed spending and tech tuition on behalf rate at this point because those numbers are kind of back into after you take off all the other local revenues and the other um, grants. So you've got the 860 related transportation. Um, normally what you do there is you take whatever was reported in the stat report from two years prior, which in FY20's case would be FY18. So whatever the stat report expenditure is, and then you multiply it by, it was supposed to be 50% state aid, it never got to 50%. So it usually hovers around 42 to 46%. Uh, I can tell you that I have to submit a corrected stat report because right now that revenue is based on what I know you expended in 27 function 2711 year um, to and from school transportation because that's the only one you get reimbursement from but when I look at the stat report it doesn't show that number so I have to adjust that send it into the state so that they'll give you that revenue kind of hard to explain, but um, they don't, the state doesn't tell us what it is. We essentially base it, they tell us to go look on your stat report and multiply it by the percentage you want to multiply it by, but we know it's not going to be 50%. And last year, did, you're saying that 48,000 is an incorrect number, or? No, that 48, I, you know, I, I mean the, when I look at FY18 statistical report that um, there's the expenditure of $174,000, wherever it was, that doesn't show up in the FY18 report. So I have to now submit an amended one to make sure that you guys get a transportation grant. So that number would change. Yeah, we wouldn't get that transportation aid. Right, I guess I was just wondering <coughs> that was a reason why there's uh, that much of a difference. It's quite a difference, and I have to believe that, I mean, you definitely spent um, more than that 48000 you know, we want to believe so. I, I'd have to look back at the FY17 stat report to see where they got oh, that number there. Okay. Yeah. Small school grant, you get to keep that, um, same amount each because of your merger and then the last piece to um, take a look at is that school-wide your 83411 I verified that with Jane who does the grant management fiscal side in the central office and that is what um, you receive now and we, one of the parameters that we used was okay we're, we're going to budget federal funding even for future years because there's no reason to believe that it's go down at this point. So that number will equal the amount in your expenditure bu budget that you know, there's 83411 in expenditures going to that grant and that's the revenue to that grant. Then when you subtract out all those things and you take into consideration the on behalf amount that I have to adjust out, um, you get an ed spending amount that Essentially equals the three, the, the two, the three, three, five, zero, oh, four, one, and the three, three, two, seven, two. So um, then when you go down to doing the calculations, and maybe this is not a better way to do this, but so I'm comparing FY19 to FY20. And when I looked in your book on the revenue page, which was page eight. This didn't add up correctly. You know, it, it, it's supposed to be 4251494, but if you add all these segments together, it equals more than that. So I was a little worried. Um, <laughs> but this is one of the reasons why you didn't get a revenue sheet when I set out the expenditures, is I couldn't tie into what I was getting from the state. So we did verify, and this, what, this is your three-year comparative sheet that is the official one from the state. We did verify that at least it was reported correctly. So while it wasn't published correctly last year in the revenue side, um, it was 
it was ultimately reported correctly, so the tax rate for this current year is correct, et cetera, et cetera. So when you go through the, the calculations of things, it's basically for FY20, I'm going to take your total expenditures of 4464493. I'm going to subtract out the local revenues that is everything but the ed spending and the tech tuition on behalf. Um, and then I'm going to take that amount um, divided by your equalized pupils. So you would take the, the ed spending with the on behalf of 33788313 um, divided by your equalized pupils went down from 184.19 to 179.93. If you're following me, yep. Yep. Okay. I see it. Yep. So then you get a tax rate prior to CLA of 1.7979. I subtracted out the six cents. Okay, where's that? Where, is that right here? Prior okay. CLA? Yep. Yeah, okay. Minus the six cents. So, or, yeah. it's, and this is prior to minus the CLA, it would be 1.7379. Yep. Then you got to shift over to the columns yep. to the right so you can see what each town's um, applied CLA would be on that. In both your cases, the CLA went up by about 10%. Increasing CLA has the effect of lowering the tax rate. So on this particular budget, um, after CLA, you'll notice that tax rate goes down. For Rochester, down by three cents. For Stockbridge, down by almost seven cents. And you divide it by the CLA. Right. Yes. The difficulty here is there's four hundred dollars per pupil over the excess spending limit. So they're charging you double for right. that tax mm -hmm. amount. That usually doesn't play well. No. It will not. It will absolutely <laughs> not. I told you. I told so, you. and, and oh, have a problem. Yeah. Um, 73 grand. So $73,100 exactly need to so come out of that budget. Give me that number again. $72,100. So those rates take into account that penalty or they don't? Because how can our tax rate go down? It takes into the account the penalty. You notice that the homestead rate oh, prior, that prior it's to the, CLA. The, yeah, it's because of the CLA. Yeah. So what they see on their tax bill will be down, right. but you know right. that uh, if your CLA, and it's kind of surprising to have a swing of a CLA that much. Yeah, it's awesome. Um, it hasn't happened in any of our Well, we're to, remember, there's not a lot of sales in the area to, 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 to base things on. And if just a couple are selling above above market, market it, it, then that it shoves it up. Yep. I mean, you have very healthy CLAs. We do. Right. Both of us. Now, um, and this where includes does the fact that we're paying for pre-K now and we weren't last year, so that's part it does. of the reason that's, that's, that's going right. increased. Yeah. Um, as a not saying that it's going to be okay, but just no, but one it's of the <laughs> reasons why. Um, yeah. Not getting that. Yeah. No, I have um, in. Other times that I've created. just to be yeah. clear though, last year we budgeted for all the pre-K. We just budgeted in its own section, and then we had revenue to offset it. It's not right. like we didn't. Okay, right. It's still, okay, right. It was still in the budget, but there was also right. revenue line that offset right. zero to right or yeah. Um, um, going through that calculation that we just did, I've done that in um, previous years. Um, but I have the yield in there. Yeah, it's it's. The, the 10 the yield um, is 10, six, 10 six, six, six. So yes, I actually did use that in my calculation. You so can't just see it. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so to get to, that would be... Um, you, you divide the um, cost eight. per pupil by um, the, the 10, 6, 7, 75. Yeah, you divide by 10, 6, 6, 6. Okay. Yeah, I guess I jumped over that step, but that is correct. That is how you do it. Okay. And on... Um, isn't the isn't the yield what is at the ten seventy done? What's the yield again? It's the ten six six six. It's right. what six, they announced. It's, right it's, it's, there. it's what the right. It's, it's it's what the state says it should cost you to educate right. a person. I, I didn't know what the amount I think was. it's actually the amount the state says you raise by a dollar on the state. Right. Yes. yes, that's what I think it is. Um, now that's subject to change. They could at the end of the legislative we session really say. We don't know where this lands until later. Right. Right. So that yield changes. But I think you definitely, if 
you possibly want, changes. You know, you need 72, one, you want to go to 73 because it could possibly change. You want to still make sure you're below the U. Yep. I mean, the, below the U.S. So. Right. And, um, What does, okay, this is um, going down the, the tax rate on the tax bill is, okay, um, how do you get that calculation from this? So um, the, just so I know that when, as we are looking for the, like to reduce, how does that change the tax rate? As we reduce the budget. Okay, so when you get the the, um, the tax rate where you take it divided by the ten six six six. Yep. Okay. You're going to come up with that one point seven nine seven nine. Yep. And then it's after that that you subtract your six cents. Right. Okay. So then you come up with the one point seven three seven nine. Yep, 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 yep. Okay. Uh, yep. So it's all um, it's it's your per pupil spending divided by the Okay, so it's that it's, it's, it's that rate, then we we divide it by the um, CLA. Correct. Gives me the test. So that's the number that I need to Yeah, so it needs so your per see. pupil expense. Yeah. If okay. you reduce that, you'll reduce right. the tax rate. Right. Okay. Um do we, what's our current tax rate? It's, it's different for both of you. I, I mean, your current homestead one is 1.6076. 1.606. 1. That's after the eight cents. It's right here. Here. This is Rochester's, this is Stockbridge's. Um, for FY19. So for FY19, that's what I would see on my Tax bill? What you would see on your tax bill for Rochester would be that 1.6076. Just coincidentally, your CLA was 100%. Okay. So if they didn't change, you know, so it becomes what the homestead is that prior to CLA because it's right on 100%. And then stock revenues, um, CLA was only 90%. So once I take the 1.6076 divided by 90%, yeah. Then I get the 1.7862. Right. So Stockbridge is going to have a different rate on their tax rate because of their CLA. Yeah. Right. But you and both have the same pre CLA, pre -CLA, pre -CLA rate. Right. 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 And uh, now because you merge, there's usually a, also a target um, aspect to it. But you, Brad James, indicated you hit the target for this current year. So after once you hit the target, it, you don't see. have that target anymore. It's just whatever the calculation is. So one of the things that I just want to mention, you know, just advocating for our kiddos, Jenny brought up one of the reasons for the increase is that now we are fully paying for preschool. Mm -hmm. right. So we might consider seeing how much Wendy and I could get out of this budget without necessarily saying, okay, we have to give up the entire SWIM program, or we have to do this, we have to do that. And at least consider trying to offset some of this 72 with the fund balance. Because if we are basically paying for an entire, well, no, paying for about 60% of a brand new program. Well, in this calculation, I've included all the eligible fund balance to offset. Oh, so you've already spent I've the already, fund balance. I've already you spent the fund, yeah. band, the, fu the fund balance yeah. is completely spent down. But is the difference in, in the pre-K, um, is it went from 173000 to $280,000. So it's a significant jump in pre-K. That's, that's almost, it's not quite, but that's almost the whole amount. That's 60000 Yeah, the increase 72. is almost 213000 451 to 4464 is about 213,000, so that's about a good time. Is it, is it important that we get beyond just that 73 in order to create a buffer so that if the, the numbers later on come in different? Yeah, I mean, the, the, the accurate amount was what you calculated right. 
seven two one. I'm saying maybe add a little bit to that so that we don't get drilled. Especially since it uses up all of the material. Right. I don't know how much that would be, but it probably. Yeah, we right. Well, I think that again, you know, for the purposes of the the thought exercise, knowing what has to be given, you know, coming back and saying you need to come back and, and show us what a budget that gets us out of the penalty would look like. And, you know, then we say, well, gosh, we don't want to, you know, lay off a vowel. We don't want to sure. yeah. cut the food program. We don't want to do whatever it is. But understanding, you know, where that would be, I think, I mean, we've got a lot of, we identified a number of, of slots around uh, both building and around the duplicative, you know, technology assessments that, you know, understanding where all that, all, all that is, I think that's actually the way the way to go, Carl. You'll never hear Lindy and I say you can't cut a budget. You can always cut a budget. It's just what are we willing to accept? So right. what I'm guessing, I mean, Lindy and I would need to talk, but what I'm guessing we would do is come up with some options and say if we did this, then it takes this out. If we did that, then it takes that amount out. Right, right. But again, I think I think the first place to look at is to clarify we need to clarify some of the some numbers, numbers because you know we we've said well maybe that 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 nine thousand dollars is. is, is adds into this other other place you know maybe we've we've got some of mark's money twice but you know maybe I we've got the, some money in, in buildings that we're not i think using. the wild card is that could make this task significantly bigger is what we ultimately end up deciding we need to put in there for a food subsidy yeah because it's very low right now if that has to go to something like seventy thousand, then we're talking about getting one hundred and thirty thousand out of this budget not seventy. what um what do you pay for Price per meal. It's two eighty five per so it's it's nine dollars per meal. Is there any trust fund? Yes. Please add in. Sorry, I finally met with Bill. We just have to put in a specific request, but they have nine thousand dollars for us to add into the revenue. Right. Fund. Oh, hot dogs. I wondered no, about we that. No, did, we did. Did we ever get the clarification that, that we can do that legally and not? Because that was always the big question was someone following up with Dina or whoever to confirm that. For on the Stockbridge side, um, while we're one budget, we still get billed separately. So it's very easy to identify that that money is going to pay for the Stockbridge. Right, right, and I get that. I, I get so that, it's just making sure that we can have the. Everything he had done on his end said that it wouldn't be a problem. I can't speak to so the other trusts, but that was what he came to the table with to make. So that's a specific trust for the school. Right, there's an education fund, there, there's okay, several there's different specific things. Right. So then um, there's also the, in Rochester we have the trustees of public funds, and they right. often, um, when approached, have, have given monies towards educational um, right. things. That is not specifically school trusts or school, that is the trustees of public funds. I think your trustees of public funds at one point funded uh, part of a principal to make them full time. Mm -hmm. But that was different than right. Well, they have they, they, the, the, the trustees. The, right. Right. The that trustees of public so. funds have specific funds that were that were given to the Stockbridge schools, and they administer. They, so they, they were taking Stockbridge school money and, and giving to you. Okay. Um, the now, the trustees of public funds in Rochester have. Um, donated oh, in the past to the school. Right. Is to it help keep the just school. just from general ge general funds from they they general. administer or right. school specific funds? I am very unclear of the understanding of this, and I've tried to to uh, wrap my head around, head around it because there's there is a number of funds that Rochester has as well. Right. And so is this money from the trustees of public funds part of? These other funds that they are administering, some of the funds have specifics that they go for scholarships. Well, that's different. So would it be something like if you went to them and said, we're requesting $8,500 for swimming? Right. Is yeah. it that kind of a request we would make? Or? For Stockbridge, we just have to submit a letter. And it needs to be seen on the revenue side. I already the, put it in. Just perfect. The, I well, that was right, the right. And and that and was and we, also, we only got to get to 64. We got we've, we've also, got, we've, we've also in the past been able to, 
Because there's also MUNS funds that the, the, the Stockbridge trustees of public funds administer their uh, 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 welfare funds for the, the for the for the right, benefit of the poor, and we've been able right, but we've we've in the past been able to tap that for helping kids ski or buy you know buying winter clothes so, for kids. Right, right. So where the, that's the a separate thing, that, and they have set up money. a different. Um, their research has shown them that they wanted to go through a request, like for instance family that misses qualifying for free and reduced lunch by like five dollars. And it's hard to pay that lunch bill, but this is the hot meal that we can send that lunch bill to the town clerk's office and that money will pay off that child's lunch bill. Okay. It's the way that they have right. talked about right. it as a it's been it, when there's been different administrators it's been different, you know. Right. And they seem to hope we've gotten in the past like, part of the reason we got nine thousand dollars from the school fund was that it used to be we get nine thousand dollars from the school fund and one thousand dollars from the from the poor fund and we were supposed to you know give them a list of where the 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 the, 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 the poor fund I hate that term. Like, he's renamed like, it. He's renamed it. He called it principals walking around money. I'm like, don't say that. Don't say that. <laughs> yeah, Put it don't at say the town that. office. I will send you a bill and you guys can cut a check. Right to reimburse right. for a child's lunch or if they didn't Whitcomb. have the right winner. Yeah, it was like the Whitcomb, Whitcomb Trust. Right, for the it was the Whitcomb Trust for the Poor or something. Yes. Or the indigent of stock. So they've split it into they split it into two things now. One to help school specific children right. who can't take on she can't Right, pay, pay the instrument rental fee from Ellis Music, can't exactly. pay a field trip fee. <laughs> right. Exactly. Right. Versus we just send the bill. Okay, yeah, we used to be able we used to get a thousand dollars worth of revenue, right. and then we had to write a letter that said this money was used for just uh, he generalized just wants a narrative, bill. He doesn't no want names, a child's no initiatives. Name. Right. So, is the board's direction? I just want to be clear, so Lindy and I know we're headed in Maryland. Is the board's direction that you'd like us, as a starting point at least, to get seventy-three thousand out of this budget, provide yep. options for how to do that? Yeah. Knowing that it could be more when we grapple with this food subsidy right. thing. Right. Or it could be, yeah. And and, and understanding that, that you know, the, the nine thousand dollars revenue, you know, is, is added in there so it's really sixty sixty three. But yeah, or sixty four. Um what if we keep it this way? Because the taxes go down. What right. We just, this well we can. I mean I just I think the important what thing is that taxes go down? in the past the going if into the taxes penalty. Go down, I don't want to well, you said we can. I mean, we'll see the options from Bonnie, and we might say, right, hey, we don't want to cut any of this. I see. Right. Then we try to we we try to put that budget out, and we we see if they vote it down. Right. It's painful to pay the penalty. It is. Yeah. That's a well, hard one to swallow. Well, I mean, other than the food, there are items that we don't know yet. Only I'm yes. guessing some of these reductions won't hurt a whole lot. Some of them are just numbers we have to clarify. Yeah. Okay. Um, and as far as the, looking on the trustees of public funds, I don't see these funds as a revenue in our budget anywhere. Like we have the fund for excellence. I don't see that. I don't see the, um, you know, the, the Mrs. K fund. So I guess what it must be is that when that line item is of the trustees of public funds, they are taking money, which is appropriate from a dip, whatever grant, Right. Um, and they I, didn't give it. They didn't give us any last year because we again last year we weren't sure we just were about so the legality. Really, so it's just we need to get the budget done. We already pushed the meeting back and all that. So try to get good numbers out of we, uh, we, do, we should make a request to them. I think it's a, it's a um, you know, a nice. Sure. Well, I think I think if 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 you know if you could if you well, said well. It's, the, you know, the Stockbridge trustees of public funds are ponying up nine grand. Would the Rochester well, ones want to pony up nine grand, or do we want to make it a per kid uh, amount? Well, so just historically, we have um, of 2015, it was 65,000, 2016, it was 75,000. Um, that they gave us a lot of money. Yeah, that they gave us. Okay. Well, we oh. have. <laughs> well, <Yes. laughs> Ooh. Right. I thought I was doing well. <laughs> That's not like nine times. There's our seventy-three <laughs> freaking lot of money. They can right. food service. <laughs> right. So um, I, I don't know what's in, I don't know what's entailed with approaching them. Uh, sometimes they've just come to our meeting and been like, "All right, we'll give you, you know, you know we're gonna give you like." 
Is there like what one main point that it seems like builds our the, point of contact for What is that? Yeah. Barb, he does, he does, Barb to heart, right? Well, Barb and Mar, uh, Mike. Mike. Mike Harvey. Mike Harvey. Okay. Uh, and and uh, Ann Pierce get reelected, but one of the issues, if I'm not mis mistaken, is uh, I didn't do so well with the stock market this time around. Yeah. That has what a big. What is the fraud? Huh? Well, <laughs> yeah, I think I think reaching out to to, to 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 Barb and getting an idea of what that would be, if they've got any plans for that, would be. Yeah. I mean, actually. Yeah, because the, the 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 your town does its business next Tuesday. No, oh, they, no. We had the, the, town, last the town night. already did it yeah. last okay. night. So, would the would the trustees of public funds had to have budgeted so that already in their next year budget? I don't know. <sighs> yes. I, well, the, I have a town report in the car, the new one. So they they did their allocations. For, for the monies they they had, but if I'm not mistaken, I don't think they right, did they so well. They didn't do so well this time around. Right, but you think, regardless, if it's um, funds for the school, you know. Well, the Kirkpatrick law uh, fund isn't that di really directed toward the school? I mean, right. I have I have some here that are they are. The, they are school funds that are separate from town funds. Right, so the question is, it is town meeting, then it's town funds was what was discussed, but this is school funds. So is it too late or not? My experience with Bill came to me with a breakdown of what the possibilities were. Said this is what they've done in the past. This is what I needed to do. This was their meeting date, and we wanted it by this meeting date, and it just needed to show up on the revenue side of the budget. Four, they have four meetings a year, something like that. I hate to leave, but may excuse myself. Oh, it's wild. Thank they, you they, so they much. Yep. Thank you very much. I have a two-hour drive to the car. Oh, my so. God. <laughs> I'm sorry to hear that. All right. Well, so we know where we stand. Thank you. We're, we're you. clear on the, where oh, we stand, what well, we're expecting uh, from you guys for the next round of the budget. Um, let's quickly, since we're yeah, let's try getting to, to be an hour, uh, you do that. Muni what's the municipal sidewalk request? It's not me. I can tell you right now. There's no okay. <laughs> um, <laughs> so, so it's Bonnie. Thank you. Thank you. Thank thank you. Nice meeting you, Marilyn. Nice meeting you all. Um, okay. So um, thank you. Thank you. Um, update on literacy work. More policy. Uh, should I go? I, I feel so badly. That Wait until you come back. Go ahead and uh, well, what's it? Can, we, can you tell us the Haiti thing? Okay. So we can have that discussion while we wait for the principals to regroup. This is from Walter Gallup um, from Rochester. No, this is just a big picture. Um, Dr. Gallup through um, Walter through um, Shir Shalom the synagogue in Woodstock goes on all these different missions. Um, he's been um, to Vietnam to bring some dental medical um, new innovations to lay people so that they can um, help with the, with the dentistry work in Vietnam. And he just recently came back to Haiti. And you can read, he said this is the most incredible framework. I mean, he said it's beyond beyond description, what's going on down there. And he wants to um, convert one of his trucks, as you can see, a truck that he has, and he will ship it to Haiti. And he thought that it would be a really cool idea if, and so do I, if the Rochester and Stockbridge kids could come up with painting it with the art teacher and He'll come in and talk about the culture and show some pictures of what he did, trying to get a little diversity into the school. And um, and this, I think it would be a really nice art project, etc. So I told him I would bring it up. I think it's a nice idea, um, not just because it's an art thing and it would get the kids together.
together, but I think at this time it's a really nice thing to reach out to others and show kindness, and um, especially to immigrants and across the way. So I think it would be a really opportune time to do something. So that is the meeting. That's cool. Cool. Can uh, the administration maybe talk about us and give us a recommendation uh, at our next meeting? That would be really. You know, how that how you might make that fit and what we could do and if we have to put any money or anything at it. I you know, know our our teacher is working with the older kids on murals, like that's a whole unit and they're doing the bathroom stuff up over. So I can see that playing right in. Yeah. Or just be logistically. So cool. well, yeah. I just think thinking seeing the lead time we have, it would be a wonderful thing to pay for. Yeah, well, and I don't, do we, we don't necessarily need a recommendation back. I mean, that, I no, I'm just going to tell them that you guys are we're brought, to, brought to the principals and they go forward as they see fit. contact right. information you can share? I do. Okay. Yeah, I will send that to you. Thank you. Will you send, send it to both of us? Yes, yes. Be Well, I don't yeah. know. Come on, Jane. Yeah, Joey might have, you know. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just going to call you Mitch. <laughs> just pick a name out and call you Mitch. <laughs> okay. All right, so let's go back to municipal sidewalk request. Okay, we had, uh, in Rochester, we had a request from the town, uh, an inquiry actually. Uh, the contractor who had plowed the sidewalks could no longer do it and wanted to know if the school would be interested in using their tractor and their personnel to plow the sidewalks up to the town, off, up to the town green. I said I would bring it to the board, um, but I could not recommend it because we simply don't have the personnel hours to. Right. So say the, plows know, the person who is doing it for the town now could could not continue doing it. This it, was about three or four weeks ago. Is, is, is done doing it. Right. And but is willing to lend his equipment. No. Or the town no. has equipment. No. no they want to know if we want to use our equipment. Oh, our own equipment. Okay. okay. I missed that part. That's what. Was Confused, right? And the reality for us is, if you can sort of envision the outside of Rochester, when you get six or eight inches of snow, yeah. we have one custodian. There's a lot of shoveling and plowing to do just to get the school open. So yeah. I'm not trying to be, you know, uncooperative. They don't see where we have the personnel or actually the right size and type of equipment to do that job. Right, and it's not like the town's going to pay us to clean those sidewalks, right? Right. <laughs> so the town wants us. They were, just, they were inquiring. They were wondering if we would, if there's any way we could see our way clear. And I was clear and said that, you know, I would have difficulty recommending that to the board. I didn't want to put out false hope. So I don't think you. Right now, does the town plow our um, they do, parking lot? They plow our parking lot. Yep. And that with the equipment, yep. With no cost, though. Yep. Okay. Yep. And it, yeah, I just don't see the Basically, yeah. I think it was an inquiry. They were just trying to find a solution. Right, uh, yeah. their meeting. Right, right. right. There was no sense that if you know if you don't, then we won't. It wasn't that kind of conversation. Okay. I think at this time, I agree with you that we just don't have the personnel to do yeah. that. Um, if if it is going to warrant more conversations, because there is, that it is you know hard feelings or something, yeah. then we'll discuss it. Yeah. Okay. Got it. Update on literacy work. Oh boy, let's not do that again. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think I'd like to hear. First, let me say that I have no doubt, no doubt whatsoever, that Mary Ellen and Bruce, um, and so I'm sure the rest of the district, but from the top down, it's so important, that they're totally committed to improving the literacy in this district. I mean, totally committed to that. Um, and so, and I also think because of the purchase of, of the rest of the materials and the fact that everyone's going for a consistent common training and kids will be reading out loud, etc., that just the fidelity to a program, you're always going to see scores just go up. So, I mean, if we didn't see it, I would be surprised no matter what you use. Fidelity to something is going to make it go up. And you're, Say coaches and accountability. So, and enthusiasm. Yeah. So I don't doubt that that's that we should see some some raising of the of the achievement and and, and I will be looking carefully. Um, I I have further 
questions. Um, I have a lot of doubts. Um, Mary Ellen explained that this was a process, not a program. I have a problem with that. <laughs> I think that you have, I mean, there's, she said it was 15% kids of Rochester. I don't know it's not, she couldn't give me. 15% of, of Rochester kids are proficiency. That's an inner city score. I mean, that's bad. That's not just, you know, a little, that's bad, 15%. And I think Stockbridge is probably about the same, if not lower. Roughly. So, I mean, that's really, so just making improvement, I'm not sure that I see a process doing that. And I'm especially concerned now, truthfully, because it's a process. That means professional development. And if that wasn't negotiated initially, that frightens me. That really bothers me. Um, and what is the coaching going on in the classrooms? And how is FMP going to provide that for us? Because they should be doing that. Um, $200,000 is a lot of money, man. And I've never seen, they always give free materials. That's nothing for them. But they give, they provide professional development for that. And, and that should be there. Um, I'm also very concerned because there is such a large percentage in tier two and tier three. I, I tier two more, of course, tier three special ed. Um, but you need an instructional tool to teach those kids. Professional development is just not a, a process that underlies something because from what I see, and again, the commitment to professional development that Bruce has, I think it's amazing. These teachers um, don't always know how to teach reading. And they don't know how to teach it to kids who are really, really, really struggling. And I think this is going on for years. I'm, I'm testing two adults tomorrow, guys, who went through these schools, who read at a first grade level. And part of the solution is parents reading to the kids 20 minutes a day. That can't, were they part of the process? Were parents on the committee? Were, you know, I don't know who was on the committee. I couldn't see a rubric, Mary Ellen couldn't find, I asked for a rubric. By that I mean what you guys came up with for the letter. Certain characteristics and did it meet it or did it not meet it. Um, the one that, that I'm most familiar with is Florida State University. Um, I, I, there was, she couldn't give me a rubric. Um, she gave me the four goals and all of the materials that are being ordered, but um, couldn't find a rubric nor the materials that were analyzed. I wanted to know, okay, how are you choosing these ones? What? And um, I will say that I that I investigated over the week because I wanted to make sure that I was on um, some strong footing. Most of the, in fact, all of the districts, I, I, I contacted about nine districts in, in Arkansas and Georgia that were similar in size and economic makeup to Stockbridge and Rochester. This was a year's process for them. They didn't do it in, in months. They did it in years, and they had parents on it, and they had school board, and they had, you know, you, they just could roll it out for me. This was the group of these were the people on the committee, etc. Um, if we're asking parents to be part of the solution, we should be part of the process. And I'm not sure that that has been, has, um, they haven't been included in that. So I have, I also have, based on the article I sent out, I saw it in none of the materials, but I will ask Mary Ellen more. And I didn't ask about professional development, I will admit, because I just assumed that it was in the package. Um, but I'm curious about, and I couldn't find it, the oral language base for the pre-K and the K. What is the structured instructional tool that we use in that? Because that's the basis for comprehension. If they don't have the oral language, then they're not going to have the comprehension, and decoding is nothing. Um, so I have, I have concerns. Again, I trust that the scores will go up because, again, fidelity and materials and the passion that these people have, the excitement of the teachers, is it going to go up as much as it could? I don't think so. I don't think so. Not with these materials. But nor, nor with that, the coaching, etc. But I'm not sure. So we, we 
I have other questions. Mary Ellen was most gracious, um, and she's working on professional development now, but she knows I have more questions, and I will certainly um, delve further into it now that the materials are in the school tools, and I'd like to see them. This is a big outlet for us, and again, we really need to make some accelerated growth. So, um, I mean, that's, that's where I am. I'm not in any way finished delving in um, to, what's, to what is happening, but I, those are my questions, and I will certainly keep well, at I think it. it's, I think, you know, given uh, Bonnie's comments earlier about you know, having Mary Ellen here, she could have answered some of those questions earlier. Your concerns, I think it'd be important. Bruce, can we have Mary Ellen be at our next meeting, please, and have a presentation on uh, this whole process, an idea of where we are so we can all have an understanding? Of, of, of what's going on and we can you know feel more comfortable about uh, where we're going because yeah 15 percent of our kids reading is uh and kind of a yeah and then going forward um is there a, you know what, what are we going to use to evaluate this that it's it's working it's not working um i think well, well we have that the star we, there is yeah. i don't know that there is a rubric and that was in terms of the materials mm -hmm. um but i do going to use the star 360 yeah we are bank F &P. Tests. we also have a data warehouse so we're right that, oh that that, that was a really big point that Mary Ellen brought out that now every kid will be and I, how can I forget that every kid will be <laughs> a database it will be starting from a database there will be research on each kid and so this will be reevaluated in a year two years no. five years oh my every gosh. three months and, yeah okay. every three months every three months will be evaluated if this program well, and, is working and you're not going to wait for three months for tier two or tier three right no 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 no, no. 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 Six, six, three, right before okay. Okay. Six, three, three. So, so these are these are all the things that that will have explained to us at the okay. at the next meeting yeah, and i'm just going to add one thing I, I i don't want to negate any of the questions that were raised because i think they're all important to get answered one of the things sort of have to work really work together on is shifting uh, at least my my sense is we have to shift our paradigm about what it takes for a child to be a successful reader because we have two schools with several children in them whose parents will never read to them for 20 minutes at night never so we have to figure out ways if we believe that's a that's an important component of reading success which I happen to agree with we have to figure out ways to get volunteers into our buildings or people who are already working in our buildings to read 20 minutes a day with certain kiddos. I we simply can't have academic success be based on something that a child can't control. And I think we also should have workshops for parents on how to read to your kids. I agree. And, that will work for buy, Let's see if we can get a grant to get books and, and read to the kids and show the parents how to do it. And, and at the same time, we have to come up with alternatives. Because if I have three jobs, man, and I don't get home till 9 o'clock, I'm point. not reading to my kid even if I can. That's right. So, you know, I think we have to come up with all the same way that we're now paying for the trips for everybody because we don't want right. to. We have to somehow come up with alternatives for those kids when parents are not going to be able to write. Are you saying volunteers in the school? I would love reading to have to shift their paradigm on what is so what we need to do. Sign up. You can come in tomorrow at 825. It has. I mean, it has to. It has to. Yeah, I think that. But we have to involve parents in the process, and that also and has to be in addition to, not in place. Right. And for us to really be successful with those scores, we may have to think way beyond the materials and the professional development. Because I can still say at Rochester, some of the youngsters that are going to struggle in school. We are not getting into our preschools for a myriad of reasons. And that goes back to those three million words before they ever hit school. We've got to figure out ways to transport kids to and from preschool. I know it's it's done in Stockbridge. We haven't figured out yet. How, I shouldn't say that. At this point, it has not been a priority to do that, and we need to think about that. Because I know there's at least three, three and four-year-olds that we would have wished we could have gone into the preschool. And, you know, if you... I guess this is kind of a little bit of a naysayer, but I'm anticipating those youngsters will have some significant challenges when they eventually come to kindergarten. I think you're absolutely right. I have a question. Um, where do parents in this community go for pediatricians? Do they? Get burned? Because what if we what if we start to contract to pediatricians and to that birthing thing at Gifford? And, and to start the, the pediatricians when they meet with the parents with the 
those toddlers and with those infants start to talk about preschool? Why don't we meet with those people who see those parents, those pediatricians, those obstetricians, whoever, and, and get it from them to the parents? Again, this is a conversation for, for another yeah, night. I, know, I, I know it's late, but I think we have to approach reading success with a sense of how many times do we hear it over and over and over again, the opioid crisis that Vermont's going through. That's impacting a lot of our youngsters. And we know we're getting kids at our door for preschool that are two and three years behind before they ever arrive. And we've got all this makeup work to try to get them understanding words and that kind of thing. It, this model is, if you look at the Kennewick, uh, what they did in Washington State, we don't have to reinvent the wheel. It's all right out there. It's a, it's a cookbook for how to try to get your kids to, to get to grade level and beyond um, at early ages. And I have a, a PowerPoint uh, that shows uh, what they did, and, and uh, it's multi-layered, it's parents' involvement, it's all kinds of different things. It's community volunteers, it's it's all kinds of things. So it's it's there. The, the problem about now versus a couple of years ago is we were so tied up in these mergers that I, I wasn't my first priority then because we were still trying to come together and and I think one of the things we have to do, and this this amazes me, both in my role here, and then I think most of you know I'm the chair of the Otter Valley Unified Union School Board over the other side of the mountain. It always strikes me how seldom we talk about student achievement. Mm -hmm. It surprises me how seldom we talk about implementing reading programs, implementing math programs, trying to get parent volunteers to support our youngest readers, oral language in our preschools. Maybe what the board would consider is making a commitment to have on every agenda at least one item that is related to student achievement or instruction or academic success or because I and I know we get taken up with the business things that has to happen we have to have a budget we have to we have to we have to but I think we miss the boat if we don't make room on that agenda every single oh, meeting I, I, to I have some excellent. sort of a, I think that's excellent because otherwise we lose our focus Right. Otherwise, that's sure. like the principal who's out at the buses and down with the furnace and doesn't know the teacher's name. Right. right. So, right. neither of you. <laughs> so, I don't know. I've been spending a lot of time with furnaces and roofs. <laughs> yeah. More than I ever wanted to. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. So I'll um, keep up. I was hearing about this, trying to educate the parents to read to their kids, but you still have those people at 11th and 12th grade. Don't let them out unless they're educated on how to read to their kids. <laughs> because this is where the connection point is missed. What's going on that people are getting out there having families that can't even read their kids? Yeah. I'm, I'm Deb Matthew, Deb Deb Matthew will, will, tell you, will, will, will tell you that many of the uh, special ed families she's working with now, she worked with the parents and the grandparents in the, in, uh, the right. beginning of her career. There are certainly there, there there are certainly some generational issues and, that uh, need to be uh, addressed. And there and, and there's a couple of just major tenants that we should get up every day and think about. And, and you know Bruce is, is great with research. I'm sure Jenny is. There's other pieces that are. Janie. We uh, Janie. What are you doing? Do you see this? <laughs> see this? I do. I know. I, 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 I think I'm going to go with Miss Mitch. Mitch. I'm just going to call her Mitch. <laughs> Mitch. The thing. That we like that can, the thing that we can substantiate with very, very little question is that kids who are in trouble by the end of grade three remain in trouble the rest That's of their right. academic career. And what takes we a need, half an hour to remediate the kindergarten it takes three hours by third grade. If it can be remediated by yes, third grade. It right. can. Right, right. So we need to front load, uh, we need to front load our pre-K, K-1 and 2 programs. And we need to be tenacious about kids not leaving those grades without being right. And I think that also and that's why I want the role. I think our teachers place. need the the skills to be able to right to yes, well. uh, identify and 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 yes. definitely some need for some tier one instruction. 
Right. Wait. When you have, when we only have 30 percent of our kids at standard, something is majorly wrong with tier one instruction. That's that's mm -hmm. that's a given. That's why we need to start. So so yeah, let's definitely hear about this next month. But that's one of the that's one of the things we'll look for too. And mm -hmm. is is how well, many kids in tier two move up to tier one? Exactly. How many kids in tier three move up to tier two? Because that's what should be happening. That's what we so, should be looking at. So are we going to hear about how this program is going on at our meetings every month then for a while? Well, it's not just this program. It's, it's the process. Well, I'm just suggesting it not be just this no, program. No, no, no. I agree that on our agenda, agenda, I agree with what you're saying on the agenda. I was then circling back to oh, our, okay. our reading program and the evaluation. I am assuming that if we're evaluating it every six weeks, we'll... It'll be reported back to the board for a while how we're doing on that. Higher functioning boards talk about academics. That's right. They do. Okay. That's right. In particular. All right. All so, right. Black River meeting went really well. Um, we uh, agreed that an end date would be May 1. Um, there's still a little bit of flexibility with them, but that um, they really wanted. Uh, that deadline to push keep that on track. to keep them on yeah. track. As, I was surprised he said that. <laughs> as uh, many, I guess, engineers and uh, architects are um, like that. It went really well. We um, met for about an hour and a half. Um, so we look, definitely look forward to they'll be, they'll be talking with um, Bonnie and Lindy, uh, getting access to the building. And um, I'm we pretty happy. And, Thank we'll you have so some doing that. Yeah, that we'll sense. we'll definitely have a lot of conversations once we get that that study back. It's going to not be just a one night. We'll just flip through it. We're going to have to it'll be on our agenda for a number of number of May first is the deadline. May first is the deadline. Um, the the to present out to the group to the present to or, right to the present to the group that was had met and then uh, on our May. Seventh, seventh regular scheduled board meeting they plan to present to the whole board. Excellent. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I thought they, they were really good. They they seemed like they were interested in the yeah. dynamics between the school groups. Oh, it yeah. seemed like their level of effort was really what they weren't trying to sell us on every little detail. Yeah. Their they level of effort was things. in line with what we were wanting. Yeah. And they're going to be putting together a contract to send um, to us. So like they're okay, so we're not using that. Forward. We're not using that contract that we had developed. Bank their own. We'll yeah. see what they say. Yeah. Okay. We'll see what they say. Right. Yeah. <laughs> it should be contract. Yeah, I think it's kind of just it should be contract. Kind of yeah. Which company was this? Was this Black, Black River. River. I know Black, but was it the one with the pretty thing that Ethan liked? No, 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 it wasn't the folder. Not seven attachments. Yeah, not the seven attachments. <laughs> <laughs> Careful now. Be careful how you talk. All right. Slow okay. Technique. So um, the, the five twenty eight. The annual report. Um, we I had a had had um asked a question about uh, our bulk mailing because we um uh a bulk mailing permit and I don't know if we need to come up with a number of um reports that we're going to send out ahead of time so then we can get a check cut from the SU to be able to fund the, so I guess the questions are for Stockbridge, how many do you usually send out? And well, last send out time, last year? Well, I don't know, <laughs> last time, um, this is how Rochester right. has done right. it the past two years and I would like us to, for the Rochester residents, do that again. It is not labeled with specific addresses. It is sent to the resident or current occupant, of, and so it just gets put in everybody's mailbox. I think it's how it got done last year for Stockbridge, too. I don't know about that. I know that your town report got labeled and sent to yeah. everybody. Yeah. Now, um, I, that's how they did the I, I thought we had done it in two different ways, so yeah. I just wanted to, it's a, we have some time, but I want to bring that up so we can figure, find the information Frank that we need. Frank was the person that... Frank did that. At least you yeah, did I mean, Rochester. I, I, well, I remember I sitting in, sitting with him at Rochester, <laughs> sorting, sorting bulletins in some particular way, and I don't remember well, what that was, whether it was address stickers for Stockbridge or whatever. It must have been, because it was. I, I think that was why Rochester eliminated that, was because just sitting there putting all the, like, all right. thousand stickers on. Um, so I guess it would be good to know the number. That one, do you want to send to addresses, or do you just want to send to to current residents? It seems easier just to send out an address. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, 
don't know why we think about it and try to think of maybe why it was done right. one night. Who would know this? And you, you're asking how many were sent out last year, how many school reports were sent out. Right. Then, then we need to know these numbers. One for how many we're going to order versus right. how many, how right. much money. It's Can you cost. get that number from whoever so made them? Just count. call up and ask how many they made. So we could numbers. definitely get a, num a number of how many were made last year. Uh, right. And I might be able to find how many were made for each town. We do want to have some at the meeting. Um, and I'll ask Kathy, too. I'll ask Kathy Brown, the town clerk, if she, yeah. if she has anything. Okay, and... Because um, I don't remember, did we put a sticker over where it said delivered it to the resident? I, I Like I said, I did no, something with Frank. they were able to make two different backs for us because okay. at that time... So I remember I mean, because it posts... Right, I was just going to say, I believe that we had two different postal, yeah. bulk postal things, so they were able to yeah. print two different backs, one with stock bridges, because um, we bulk weren't officially permit. together yet, so right. they had to do the permit. Right. Now, right. what they said is basically that Rochester still has their the same bulk permit that we used to have. It hasn't changed to a new district. Um, it's good through May. It's all getting paid by our district now anyway. So we can still, still use, use the number. It doesn't. I mean, it doesn't. But it can be mailed from. Yeah. Anywhere. Lindy's going to get a funny look on her face when this question comes from me. But has there been any conversation about the cover? No, oh. about people requesting to have it via email and not have a hard copy sent to. Oh them. gosh. <laughs> that's no, that's never. becoming more of a question in districts about it cuts down yeah. on a whole lot of cost and yeah. And so I'm just going to say as a household to us two different names. We get double of everything because in Brandon they do it by name. So we have exactly like right. four of this. And like we get way too many. I'm like, oh, you just cost yourself. Yeah, and yeah, I know no, that I, in the past I've seen, and Frank was doing this, he, people that he knew right. lived together or had different names, he would peel them off yeah, from the different parts <laughs> and stick them. like, he wasted it. Only Frank. Yeah. So yeah. So it's a lot of time, I'm and I'm sure there was some money saved. Right. You know? um, but but that is a great idea. Yeah. I think we should look into that, especially if we're sending the report to um, uh, Spalding electronically anyway. The postman in Pittsburgh website. gave the board the best insight. He said, you don't know the number of people that take it out of their mailbox and toss it in the right. recycling bin. I don't, don't even look at it. Right, there's a lot. And I remember yeah. there was stacks at our post office. Do we have to look at equality? Does everyone have a computer? Well, I think, I, I would think you have to. But I think it has to be a vote. I think you have to, because. No, I don't think we could just eliminate it. No, I think you have to offer it. It has to be on the board. to a summary flyer. And if you want more like details, oh, I yes, can bring I've that in. Go to a oh, postcard. Yeah. It, like it's like that's an interesting yeah. idea. It, like it says, go to this website and you can look at it all. Oh, or awesome. you can. Yeah. There's like the highlights and that. Hmm. That might be something to think about. I mean, yeah, yeah or like you can send out. Kind of a out, way of but, just allowing people to tune in. I mean, it's probably a bit late to do it for this year, but it certainly should be a conversation, I think, for yeah. next year. Well, we'll see what that postcard looks like, because if we legally could send it in time... I think it has to be done by a vote, though, Carl. I think uh -huh. you have to change your That's what I'm going to... We'd have, I know that, like, to change the meeting off, off the fourth Tuesday of May requires a special meeting. We can't just decide that as a board. Right. Um, I almost think you have to do that. I'm not quite sure. But I don't know, I don't know about uh, dissemination of materials. All right, so that was the, you had a question about the meeting on the yes. 28th. Well, I was there, Amy and I were talking about it. And the, the problem, what's problematic about that date is it's the first day after Labor Day. One more. One more. Memorial Day? Uh, I didn't uh, say Labor Day, but it's not. You guys were the wrong guys. You guys were going backwards. Yeah, that was. And, and that could be problematic. I don't know. I know of at least one Rochester resident who has, you know, commented on it, that it was, it's bad, bad timing and there's going to be a lot of people that going to be around. And right. Maybe that's good timing. <laughs> right. Well, the big thing is, is that to change it, we have to, you know, that it has to be warned to the towns or to the district. You can't just do that as an act. Well, is it worth doing that? I guess that's so We'd have right. to have a special meeting. We're the question. We don't want people coming back on Monday. I mean, I'm sure there's some people. Right, so we'll have a um, pre-meeting on the Monday. Or the week before. We don't 
want to go on Memorial Day. Yeah. Right, but it doesn't have to be. You suggested the 22nd, right? The 22nd? Yes, there's a Wednesday the 22nd, and that is the date that we had it last year, was the was May 22nd. It's just weird, because May starts on the Monday. Right, right. So it's odd, and it has pushed it a week ahead. Right, so and, should say. And when we, the the minutes reflect that we, cha we um, changed the meeting from the April meeting, because we didn't have a budget together, <coughs> to a May 22nd meeting. Right. So you're saying the 22nd oh, instead of the 28th? We did. Just as a point, though. Right. Well, I think we had, I think we wanted to do the special meeting, we had people vote, I thought. No, it was not. We voted from the floor at the meeting. In April? Yeah. I, thought, I thought we did. Yeah, well, at the time, it was that it was, it was changed, it was done. Right. To, to be changed um, because we didn't have a budget. Right. And it hadn't been warned yet and we needed the timing mm -hmm. to get the warning out at the right, you know. Right. And it was uh, then changed to, to May 22nd, so. Right, which, was the, which happened to be the Forest Tuesday in that one. Right. And now it goes to the 28th. Right. Um, What's key? What? Well, the fourth Tuesday, the fourth Wednesday is actually the twenty-second. No, that is the third. Mm -hmm. Oh, oh, it's fourth yeah, Wednesday. 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 Correct, the fourth oh, Wednesday. Oh, I'm sorry, you're thinking Tuesday. Yeah, the fourth one. Yeah, the twenty-second is the fourth Wednesday. But, right. right. but you're thinking Tuesday. Right. Which right. is not. Which right. is the fourth. Right. Fourth Tuesday is the twenty-second. Right. I'm gonna be there no matter what. So. Right. I think the simplest do, thing is. I mean, I think we. We talked about wanting to, you know, maybe move the date closer so that if we have issues with the budget, we right. don't have problems. So, I, I, my opinion would be just leave it the 28th for this for this time around and warn that we're going to push the meeting forward. You know, at the at that 28th meeting, okay. we're going to reschedule it for. I, I agree. I think we should put. I think we should consider um, putting on the warning that we bring it earlier, just because. Um, it is the latest one. It is nice to be late enough to get all of the mm -hmm. actual um, tuition costs and, and, and stuff. Is but, to stop that. Right, and also um, that only puts us like to have a week to do anything to fix the budget if it goes down to be able to reward it by to be able to be voted on by July one. So it's pretty right. tight. Right. It'd be nice to back it up into late April or right. something. Right. Right. Go back to where we wanted to have it be like the fourth, or the third, or the fourth. Tuesday. So we need to put that on the warning them. Right. You got a note on that to tell Christy when she warns it or who warns it? Right. You just don't want to back up too far because then you'll miss those health premium plans and that's a big chunk of your budget yeah. to actually And when has that come out yet? Uh, that's come out, but it usually comes out But it really April. came out like a day before we back in so I'm just saying, don't go too far back in April. Right. No, I would say the end of that fourth Tuesday in, in April, or the be, you know the beginning first Tuesday right. in May or something. You know, I mean, we don't, yeah. don't want to get too far back right. in there. I love to have the ability to, to take a couple swings at it. Yeah. yeah. And I think if you went back to like the first Tuesday in May or the fourth in April, you you get yeah. that. You have a chance. Right. All right. So what are we decide? I'm just looking at something. Are we changing anything? No. 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 Okay. no. no. But we are going we're to add to the it so that we can consider a change. Yeah. Right. But for this year, it's going to stay the 28th. Yeah. Right. Is that at 7? Yeah, 7. It's in Stockbridge this year. It's in Stockbridge. Yeah, and so we will, it will be at the, here? Or yeah. at the Stockbridge meeting house? We here. We always have it here. Care yep. Provided. Yep. How is that working? <laughs> what? Child care. How is child care been provided? Is it been for older students? Older students. Typically, Carl's kids. My kids have done it. Other <laughs> other kids have done. You know, we we round a few up. Okay. And then we'll still having a high school attached to it, like right. Older, older kids. And then we'll need to determine a um uh, informational meeting date. Okay. okay. All right.
Let's, uh, uh, anything else? Yeah. Oh, we have to. We have that policy about. Yeah. Well, so. You got it. So where, where, and when was this passed out that we're going to vote on it now? This, this was sent to you. It, it's already a policy. It's just to making an amendment to it. Oh, well, making an amendment. Yes. That's not what it says. <laughs> so like, no, it, yeah. you've already passed this policy. Okay. This is a, it's a slight wording change that the committee came up with that uh, is really, the way we had it in there before, it was reflective of the, we all, we're all doing one size fit all, in other words, but seeing as how these, uh, this SU covers three different uh, counties, and each one of them have their own little protocol uh, changes. Uh, we we've put in we've changed the, uh, the the darker language to reflect that whatever county you're in is that's the protocol you use. So um, because Orange County has a certain little thing that they they've requested that we do with the attendance policy, Windsor County has one. Sure, Addison has one as well, but they they cover Cape Cod and Granville. So, um, so this this just allows it to be generic for all of you, a lot, and using uh, the protocol for attendance in the county where uh, the school is located. And so the county has its own truancy policy. Yes. Is what you're saying? Yeah, we were using the Windsor County protocol for everyone, but the Orange County. Said, no, 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 no. We'll do our own little thing. They wanted, and that's set forth, forth by county. It's the uh, assisted, assisted, assistant district attorney. Yeah, okay. Uh, in each of the in each of the counties. Okay, so. sounds good. And for middle and high school students, it would be wherever they go to school, whatever that county is. Yeah, it would be it would be wherever they go to school. Right. School is located. Right, and that superintendent would be the one that would have to Correct. to to require that. Uh, I also would tell you uh, that we have 21 new policies coming uh, probably next month for you, and uh, they will be they have to be uh, warned and uh, considered for 10 out there to the public for 10 days. So we hope you'll be able to look them over in next meeting and then maybe adopt them the following month okay. and, uh, so, and Christie's going about getting them out in papers that they're so that we're legal with all of that okay. so that'll be 46 policies we've we put into implementation and uh, there are four more that I know of that are coming later than the current group Um, I am going to say that we need to amend the policy. There's a, there's a typo. There should be a period. If you're putting semicolons after the clauses A through H, there needs to be a period at the end of making up work. Uh, clause I. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> really quickly. <laughs> um, oh, by the way, our attorney has looked over all of this, all these changes and all the policies. I've seen you just Tina's grammar. <laughs> um, yeah, I like Tina too. Um, how do we get on that? <laughs> Me! Me! All right, so uh, any discussion? No. All right. <laughs> no. Uh, hearing none, all those in favor of adopting the amended uh, policy C7 student attendance uh, signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? All right, the, the policy has been modified. That's what dads are supposed to do. I know, but we were up at 530 this morning with babysitting, so like, she needs to go on the All right. <laughs> I was just saying, dad's not good at getting You want to give them back to me, or you want to keep them? Brian sent me a message like 8.45, and should I let Emily stay up? Oh, you want to? No, I don't care for that. <laughs> All right, I'll take uh, it if you want. My mom's letter <laughs> me upset. Too. Yeah, All right. Uh, as previously noted, our next meeting will be April 2nd uh, in Stock in uh, Rochester, rather, at the Rochester campus. 
at 6.30 p.m. Uh, any other business? Hearing none, I entertain a motion to adjourn. Sure. Make a motion. Okay, second. All those in favor, signify by starting your car. Wait.